Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Ensuring Continuity of Learning uh, in ECCD, a webinar on inclusive early childhood care and development. I am your host for this event, Genesis from Simeo Inotech, and we are very happy to see our 248 participants here in Zoom, and we are also saying hi to our viewers on Facebook and YouTube. This webinar is part of Simeo Inotech's online knowledge events on specific key education issues in Southeast Asia. Uh, in partnership with Simeo Regional Center for Early Childhood Care, Education, and Parenting, 
Simeo CISEP in Indonesia, and the ECCD Council of the Philippines. Today's event advocates for the importance of early childhood <laughs> care and development and opens a space for teachers, parents, and caregivers to learn together as they ensure the continuity of learning for our young learners. For the first half of our webinar, we will hear from three speakers the significance of providing an inclusive, joyful and meaningful learning experience for our early grade learners. In the latter half of this webinar, we will conduct simultaneous sessions, breakout rooms for our Zoom participants, and videos to our live viewers to share good practices, challenges, and experiences revolving around the question, how can we ensure an inclusive, joyful, and meaningful learning experience for our young learners? We hope you're excited because we expect that this will be a fruitful and meaningful experiences, uh, experience for, all, for us all. We look forward for, uh, to your active participation throughout this whole webinar. To formally be begin the program, we invite um, the Center Director of Simeo Inotech, Dr. Ramon C. Bacani, to deliver the welcome remarks. Yeah, thank you, uh, Genesis, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, and welcome to this uh, webinar on the inclusive uh, early childhood care and development uh, on the theme, uh, Ensuring Continuity of Learning in ECCD. But first, let me acknowledge uh, some of our important uh, participants. Uh, uh, first, well, I see on the screen uh, good an old friend, uh, Dr. Ravuti, the Deputy Director for Programs from uh, Simeo Chechep. Uh, nice to uh, see you again, uh, uh, Dr. Ravuti. And uh, I don't know whether uh, the Director, uh, Dr. Uh, Ellis uh, Rosjawati, uh, is with us, but uh, I hope that uh, she will be able to catch up. Also, I saw earlier, uh, again, uh, good and old friend, uh, Dr. Teresita Inchong, the Vice Chairperson and Executive Director of the ECCD Council of the Philippines. Uh, we are also expecting uh, Mr. Muhammad uh, Asbi, the Director of Early Childhood Education of the Indonesian Ministry of Education, Culture, Research, and uh, Technology. I hope that they are, he will be able to uh, uh, join us uh, in a little while. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. I'm here with you. Yeah. Let me also welcome the, well, uh, Genesis mentioned that 248 uh, participants in Zoom and uh, those watching uh, via Facebook and uh, YouTube uh, live, uh, uh, who we expect to be uh, in the thousands. So uh, let me just say that, uh, well, I think we're uh, dealing with a very important topic in our webinar. Uh, the early childhood care and uh, development. Uh, it is uh, recognized that a child's uh, formative years, uh, which is usually uh, ages uh, zero to eight, uh, these are uh, considered to be a very important period in a person's uh, growth and, uh, and uh, development. Uh, these years uh, are considered crucial to a person's uh, physical, uh, cognitive, emotional, and social uh, development. Uh, these are an important one window of opportunity for education, which uh, is considered uh, as a fundamental right as embodied in the uh, uh, UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. And I believe uh, all the CIMEO member countries are uh, signatories to the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. The convention uh, recognizes the importance of early childhood development improve the well-being of uh, children uh, worldwide. The tutors, which I'll be presenting. Specifically, uh, UNICEF, one of the uh, so, specialized uh, agencies of uh, the United Nations, has so identified three areas of uh, vital uh, uh, concern uh, indicative of the quality of uh, ECCD. And these are the quality of care, access to early childhood care and education, and the overall development status of the children. Also on a global scale, we know that uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, specifically SDG4, uh, uh, it 
also reflects the importance of early childhood uh, care and education as uh, it uh, includes the uh, goal of providing uh, all children with access to quality early childhood development care and pre-primary education by the year uh, uh, 2030. Well, on the regional level, especially Southeast Asia, we also remember that uh, the Simio Council of Ministers sometime in 2014 in uh, Vientiane, uh, they identified uh, seven priority areas. And uh, one of these priority areas is uh, achieving uh, universal uh, pre-primary education. Particularly this uh, priority area uh, targets the disadvantaged and the marginalized uh, learners, such as poor children, rural communities, indigenous communities, and children with disabilities and special needs. And we know that the issue of achieving uh, inclusivity in education, particularly in early childhood care and development, or ECCD, is quite a complex challenge. It requires addressing various issues surrounding and affecting access to and quality of ECCD programs. And addressing these uh, challenges uh, needs cooperation of various uh, stakeholders from government, government, non-government organizations, the private sector, uh, down to the families and the uh, communities. And so uh, in uh, 2016, uh, Simio Inatec Simio Inatec, as part of its uh, research program, conducted a uh, study uh, to document and analyze the, part, the patterns of marginalization of uh, children in ECCD programs. The uh, barriers to ECCD programs identified in this study have been further heightened by the disruption in education uh, brought about by the global uh, pandemic, which uh, we continue uh, to face. And uh, the results of this uh, study uh, will uh, uh, be uh, uh, presented uh, as part of this uh, webinar. We recognize that along, along with the health risks, the pandemic also threatened children's opportunity to grow and learn with their peers. This also puts great pressure on teachers who need to continuously provide early learning programs amid the imposed distance uh, learning situation. Likewise, uh, this puts a lot of pressure on families and parents since uh, they take on a uh, bigger role in the, their child's uh, learning. And so this afternoon is actually part of uh, Simio Inotech's commitment to facilitate access and, and exchange of uh, knowledge, information, and uh, innovative uh, practices among education stakeholders in Southeast Asia. We conduct online learning events and uh, dissemination activities, such as uh, today's activity. And uh, in every learning event, we focus on a specific education concern. This time, we want to focus on uh, early childhood care, education, and development. This uh, webinar will emphasize the importance of ECCD and hopefully will provide the space for teachers and parents to learn and work together for the continuous learning of uh, young children. Uh, for this uh, webinar, we have also tapped the expertise of our partners, the Simio Regional Center for Early Childhood Care, Education and Parenting, uh, Simio Chetchep, and the ECCD Council of the Philippines uh, to help us provide meaningful and insightful sessions uh, in this uh, webinar. We do hope that this uh, learning event will be a uh, platform for sharing experiences and good practices. So uh, let us uh, learn from each other as we help provide a better future for our young learners uh, for the Southeast Asian region. Thank you very much and good afternoon once again. Thank you so much, Dr. Bakani. Whenever I hear the word inclusive, I always think about what kind. But as um, with Dr. Bakani said, inclusive also asks the question, what context? So inclusive ECCD includes children from disadvantaged and marginalized groups. And I really want to keep that lesson from the heart, uh, in the heart now for a very long time.
But now this time, let's hear a, a message from our partner institution, the Early Childhood Education of the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research, and Technology, Technology of Indonesia. With, we have with us Director Muhammad Hasbi. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the Honorable Dr. Ramon C. Basani, Director of uh, Simeo Inetech, uh, Dr. Ellis, Director of Simeo Seset, along with Dr. Puti, uh, Deputy Director of Program Simeo Seset, uh, Dr. Teresita Insiong, Executive Director ECCD Council of the Philippines, distinguished speakers, moderators, participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to give a remark in this webinar on ensuring continuity of learning in ECCD amidst a varying context and the pandemic as well. Representing Secretary General of Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology Republic of Indonesia, allow me to take this opportunity to congratulate all of you for participating in this very important webinar on inclusive early childhood care and development. Ladies and gentlemen, early childhood has been coined as the most pivotal years for development and learning in various studies. The importance of early childhood care, development and education is recognized by the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs that emphasizes the importance of ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education for all including enabling access to quality early childhood development, care, and pre-primary education for all girls and boys by the end of 2030. Before the pandemic, it was already a challenge to meet the target in the goals for early childhood development, care, and education. The government, along with various stakeholders and communities, have various policies, projects, and efforts to increase participation while at the same time enhancing the quality of ECCDE. In Indonesia, we have ongoing uh, policies such as implementation of minimum service standards, holistic integrative early childhood development program, implementation of inclusive, inclusive ECE program, and the program alignment for ECE and primary school as part of early, child, uh, early children's school readiness to ensure that we can meet the SDGs goal by the end of 2030. However, as pandemic hit, we need more strategies to ensure quality education for early children who were forced to stay at home amid ECE centers temporary closure. Distance learning needs more creativity from teachers and also great amount particip participation from parents and families. Teachers, had to learn using technology to facilitate distance learning and work together with parents to simplify the curriculum. Parents learn how to facilitate children play and report the progress of children learning to, to be followed by teacher. However, the pandemic situation has not been damned by uh, the spirit of the teacher. Together, a teacher learn to make innovation and breakthrough. Uh, so that even children in remote areas are not left behind in learning and development. Ladies and gentlemen, the importance of working together for ECCDE inclusivity and equ equity escalate in the era of pandemic, because neither government, uh, neither government, uh, teacher, parents, and various ECCDE stakeholders can work alone to maintain quality education for earlier children during pandemic. Certain measures need to be taken to ensure that teachers and families have the sufficient understanding of skill to carry on with the quality learning experience for children. In, 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 in Indonesia, the government established the policy of independent learning that has become a national movement ever since its release. The Merdeka curriculum or independent curriculum we started as an effort to help teachers and students during the pandemic has proven to be able to reduce, has, uh, to be, to reduce the impact of lost learning. Now the Merdeka curriculum has entered its third year and has been implemented in more than 2000 PAUD, we call PAUD for ECE uh, units throughout Indonesia.
Good afternoon again, everyone. Unfortunately, I think we lost Dr. Uh, Director Hasby in that moment. But thank you so much, Director Muhammad Hasby, for that message. Uh, you really hit the nail in the head. Inclusive ECCD has always been complex, even before the pandemic and after the pandemic struck. <laughs> the barriers separating or barriers um, preventing us from creating an inclusive ECCD has worsened. Um, and uh, Speaking of uh, before the pandemic, CMEO's Enotech already started conducting a study uh, on the status of ECCD programs in Southeast Asia. The study identified the common barriers to inclusive ECCD and recommends improvements to the access and quality of early childhood education. To give us an overview of this study and to set the context of this webinar, we have Dr. Sherlyn Sherlyn Almonte Acosta, Senior Specialist of the Educational Research Unit of Simeo Enotech, to deliver the keynote uh, presentation on achieving inclusive early childhood care and development in Southeast Asia. Doc She, you now have the virtual floor. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Let me share my um, presentation deck first before I proceed. Okay, and I have. Is it showing already? Is it showing? Okay. All right. Yes, so, Dr. Shep. Yes. Um, but uh, please present it um in full screen, but if you can. I'm sorry. Uh, it's uh, we are seeing the whole um, PowerPoint application. Can you present it in full screen? I did. How about that? Uh, not yet. Slide show, slide show, please. The same. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, it's not yet on um, full screen. I don't know why. Can you try sharing your screen again, but Doc Shet? Okay. So and share first. All right. What's happening here? Okay. How about that? I don't think anything changed. From your end, Puba, what can you see? Mm, what's wrong? Yep. Can we proceed na lang? All right, so maybe... Um, um, I think, uh, Doc Shea, I think Raxo will share on your behalf. Okay, that's great. So... There we go. All right, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Dr. Elise Ross Diawati, Acting Director of Simeo CESEP, Dr. Guti Iit, Deputy Director of Pro Program Simeo CESEP, um, Ministry of Education and Culture, Indonesia, Mr. Muhammad Hasbi, Director of Early Childhood Education, Ministry of Education, Culture Research Technology, Indonesia, Dr. Ramon C. Bakani, our Center Director, Center Director of Simeo Inotech. Dr. Teresita Inchong, Vice Chairperson and Executive Director of the ECCD Council. Um, to our officials, so different officials and colleagues from CIMEO CSEP, ECCD Council Philippines, representative from um, university uh, partner or partner university, Dr. Ir Dwi Hastuti, to um, one of the winners of the 2021 Southeast Asian Educational Innovation Award, Dr. Joanna Romano, to uh, Simio Inotech colleagues, and to all the participants here at Zoom, um, Facebook, and YouTube, good afternoon. It is my honor to present to you our research or the finding of the study entitled Regional Research on Achieving Inclusive Early Childhood Care and Development in Southeast Asia. This study was conducted by the Educational Research Unit of the Educational Research and Innovation Office of Simio Inotech. All right, so uh, let me walk you through to the outline of the, the presentation. 
can you change this? All right. As far as the outline is concerned, so I'll be sharing with you the objectives of um, the study. Then along with that, um, I'll show or rather I'll share or highlight the importance of um, ECCD as uh, presented in the different studies um, about the, the ECCD or the importance of ECCD. Then also I'll be sharing the theoretical framework of the studies. After that, uh, I'll, I'll uh, show as well, the, or I'll share the context of marginalization of early childhood um, in Southeast Asia. Then after that, uh, we'll be sharing the findings and policy options that are actually aligned with the UNESCO Inclusive Education Triangle. And this includes, and this are um, entitlements and opportunities, um, accessibility and affordability, and the last uh, element of the triangle is learning delivery and learning environment. Next slide, please. All right, so this one is the objective of the study. So it provides, the, the our, our study provides a comprehensive analysis of the state of ECCD for marginalized children. Specifically, it examined the context and patterns of marginalization of children from Zero, it should be eight. Zero to eight years old, sorry about it. Then policies that form the legal framework supporting the provision of ECCD for marginalized children. Then I'll be sharing as well, uh, rather the, the study also look into the ECCD programs and intervention, as well as the innovation and good practices being implemented for children from marginalized group. Also, the study was able to identify factors that help or hinder the development and education of young children from the disadvantaged social background. Now, um, we actually started, or rather we invited 11 member states in this study. Only eight out of 11 um, gave their representative or um, yeah, representative to conduct an in-country studies. And these are from Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, TDR, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, and more leste um the most uh, another significant uh, thing about um, this study is um it also addresses the concern or rather one of the priority areas of um simu Inotech, and this is um on inclusive education and it is also aligned in with um the sdg4 um next slide please All right, so this one is the theoretical framework of um, the study. So the theoretical framework is the combination of the UNESCO's um, inclusive education triangle. And um, this one, um, the inclusive education triangle uh, consists of the learning environment and learning delivery, accessibility and affordability and entitlement as well as opportunity for children. Now, as, as I've said, it's a combination of two theories aside from the UNESCO's internal or rather inclusive education um, dimensions or elements. It also consists of um, the social theory of uh, Bronfen Brenner. So the core of the study is um, the children age zero to eight from marginalized group. And then this is actually the so-called microsystem. And then um, the microsystem consists of the interaction of children, immediate family members. And as, as, when the immediate family member interact with the ACCD program available, this means the teachers, the health workers, the different professionals involved in the ACCD program, the, the child is actually exposed to the so-called mesosystem. And afterwards, the bigger system, which is the macro macro system and this entails or rather this involves the different policies the, the political context the legal context the cultural values um along with the ACCD programs and so all this system interact and influence the learning and development outcomes to the children from the marginalized group now the research team actually selected the study because, uh, or rather it selected the, the framework for this study because it recognized the fact that 
um, the growth of a child is actually a conglomeration or a, a, uh, influenced by different factors, different things in the surrounding at different levels. Next slide, please. All right. So uh, to highlight some of the important study of uh, ECCD, we have one coming from UNICEF in 2019. Investing in early childhood year has been demonstrated to, redu to reduce achievement gaps caused by poverty and other social factors, which give vulnerable children a fair rare chance as their peers. And it builds skills for employment, contributing to and strengthening national economies. Also, a longitudinal study conducted by Heckman, and it was um, found out that the access to early childhood intervention has only been, also been associated with higher earnings, labor force productivity, stronger social attachment. Then um, with the UNESCO 2006, having quality ECCD program offers opportunity to create level playing field for all children regardless of their status and background. Next slide, please. All right, this one, I would like to share with you the um, context of marginalization in early childhood in Southeast Asia. As you can see in the bar graph, we have Malaysia of 97% participation, 96% uh, for the Philippines and 95% for Vietnam, so it's it varies. No, the, the participation of uh, in early childhood participation um, from different countries actually vary. While it's very high in the three countries that I mentioned, only ten percent of that um, is the equivalent in the context of Myanmar. So these are um, um, a concrete example how varied um, participation in ECCD in Southeast Asia. Now with that, we, the, studies was, um, the study um, identified the pattern of marginalization. Um, the common um, pattern of marginalization in Southeast Asia is the poverty. So you can see here, poverty and geographic remoteness. So um, children from poor families and community are put into disadvantaged position compared to those um, with higher standards of living. So these are actually found more on um, um, rural area than in the city or urban area. So either of these factors or combination make it difficult for children to access provision for good nutrition, health, water, sanitation, and early learning. Okay, um, aside from this um, common to uh, patterns of marginalization, we also have membership in an ethnic or indigenous group. This may also contribute to marginalization of children. Since minority of population often reside in remote areas, ethnicity interacts with poverty and geography, and therefore making access to basic services um, challenging. Aside from this factor, linguistic, cultural differences within majority of population results in discrimination. Another thing is uh, children with special needs and disability also oftentimes experience more of exclusion. So children with disabilities in some cultural co communities are perceived to have been born as a result of bad luck and are treated as burden. So we're in this 21st century and yet the thinking about disability remains that this is um, a result of bad luck and um, treated as burdens. Thus, they may be discriminated against even in their own families and communities. There's also lack of specialized facilities and program that may address the educational, nutritional, health, mobility needs of these children. And thus, this contribute and further uh, um, contribute to the developmental gaps. Now, another pattern of margin marginalization is the susceptibility to disasters. So here we have here in the lower portion, the susceptibility to the disaster likewise make it difficult for children to sustainably participate in early learning activities to receive health and nutrition services. ECCD programs and are, these are open disrupted by long periods, for example, or aftermath of earthquake, 
and typhoons. So displacement of families due to this disaster contribute to poor family sanitary conditions, which increase children's chances of contracting diseases and to certain extent child mortality. So just to remind you that this study was conducted prior to, to COVID. But again, this COVID-19 pandemic can be um, a form of uh, disaster if we're, if we're going to qualify it in, in, um, in the study. Now, another thing is on internal conflict. So um, children are, uh, the safety of children is at risk when there is uh, internal conflict. And by internal conflict, we mean the, um, the cultural, religious, and political conflict. Even while families are forced to flee, the road to refuge is also often dangerous with entire families having crossed borders and seas with um, their young children. So in extreme circumstances, children are recruited as soldiers who then actively participate in wars. And for others, they experience sexual violence, injury, trauma, and even death. So further, um, another pattern of marginalization is the so-called statelessness. This is actually caused by other factors previously mentioned, such as um, ethnicity or conflict existing among children in Southeast Asian countries. So in some countries, stateless children do not have legal privilege. So that means they cannot um, access formal education. They cannot access services pertinent to health. And this exacerbates um, vulnerability or the, the state of vulnerability of children because they are denied with opportunities for survival and even social mobility. So we found out also in documents, given the different documents in the study, that marginalization or marginalized is um, rarely used in the document. What was used actually is more of the term vulnerable to a lesser extent or um, um, disadvantage. Um, based on interview, it was postulated that there might be discomfort in few countries to use the term marginalization because it implies minority groups are being looked down on, undervalued by society, or being denied opportunity to access education program. However, not all people from marginalized and or vulnerable sector may be aware of the importance of early childhood education. So that, that, that's the sad part of it. They're part of um, the so-called marginalized group. And what even aggravate that, um, that context is their, not, I mean, non-awareness um, of um, the so-called um, importance or rather the importance of the early childhood education. So whatever the definition, marginalization is open linked to exclusion, whether deliberate or not, which puts children at a disadvantage. Um, okay, next slide, please. So this one is, um, there is some um, overlapping of um, this, this pattern of um, marginalization in different countries. So that means that a person can be uh, poor and at the same time exposed to um, conflict. You know? So meaning um, this form or patterns of margin, marginalization over, overlap. And so the more that the children are denied with the opportunity or access to education and um, health services. With that, we have, um, I'll be sharing with you the findings and policy options, as I mentioned. Um, the findings of the studies, actually, the way I will present it is arranged based on the framework, the, the theoretical framework that I showed earlier. And this is more on the um, um, inclusive triangle as given by uh, UNESCO. The first is the entitlement and opportunities. So this one, um, it enforce, um, we recommend to enforce national laws and policies requiring attendance in at least one year of pre-primary education. This is the support. This is in support of, the achie of achieving universal early childhood care and development. Among the eight senior member states involved in the study, only the Philippines education system implements 
at least one year mandatory of pre-primary education. I think the Filipinos should continue giving this. Um, I'm providing, of course, it's part of the law. And I think uh, something that we can be proud of no, among um, the Southeast Asian uh, um, uh, countries involved in the study, only the Philippines um, has the so-called mandatory pre-primary education. So um, while it is commendable also that um, these countries involved in the studies recognize the importance of early childhood care and development, as reflected in the provisions protecting uh, the children's rights to education and health under the respective constitutions and law. So there are different programs available in, from, um, in the, the different countries uh, for about, uh, I mean, to address the needs of some uh, of the marginalized children, but then there's still a need to enforce national laws and policies requiring attendance in at least one year of pre-primary education. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so um, under entitlement, still under entitlement and opportunities, um, promote integrated and coordinate efforts across sector by creating national laws and policies, institutionalizing a central government agency responsible for operation regularization, monitoring, and evaluation of ECCD programs in, in the country. The context here is the ECCD program in different countries are actually offered by, let's say, yeah, the Ministry of Education, and then there are all Ministry of Health, Social Welfare. So it's highly recommended that there's a central or lead agency indeed in charge of the operation, regulation, monitoring, and evaluation of ECCD program. And with that, um, in, in line with that, it would be go good to promote a holistic and comprehensive early childhood program for young children in which crucial services, um, that includes, of course, ed education, nutrition, health, protection, um, it should be integrated in the same manner that um, when it is offered by different, the ECCD program offered by different um, agency in a country, it would also be good that these different programs are also integrated. So under the proposed central government agency, a common curriculum for early childhood program in the country can be implemented to facilitate access to the same program for all young children. So while implementing common curriculum, there should also be flexibility to consider the background, the context, the kind of marginalization being experienced by um, the children. So in other words, um, though it, would, it is really possible to come up with um, one curriculum for all in, in, one, in one country for early childhood program, it is also important that the patterns of marginalization, context of children should be taken into consideration in the developed curriculum. Next slide, please. Interesting enough, it is the challenge remain in terms of entitlement. The, um, again, the challenge is how to make sure that all children, especially the most vulnerable, enjoy the entitlements and opportunity meant for them. So that's for uh, entitlement. And when it comes to accessibility, so accessibility and affordability, the study was able to identify some factors that help or hinder the development and education of children. And these are as follows, the multidimensional poverty, level of access and funding to ECCD, cultural attitudes and policies and stereotype, quality of teaching training and services, coordination of different government ministries and sectors. So these are actually the, the, the different factors um, um, that were identified in the study. And using these factors, we have recommendation on accessibility and affordability. So when we say multidimensional multi poverty, it creates disadvantages in education among young children, particularly deprivation from basic needs. In effect, this may also have a lead to stunted growth of children and further exclusion of marginalized children from participating in ECCD program. Now, the cultural attitude, practices, and stereotype, the belief that having children with disability of special needs is a curse and still tribe in some communities 
in Southeast Asia, leading families to hide such children from society. So they are embarrassed to have special children or special uh, child in, in, in the family. So the tendency is not for the child to be exposed to, to anybody and, of course, to um, services in education. And uh, so children from ethnic and indigenous background also experience discrimination. Without the support of parents, attendance of children, ECCT program will simply not be possible. Okay. In line with this, we also have recommendation on how to really reach out to, to parents. It's, also, it's very important that we foster awareness um, among the parents, especially those in rural area, on how important the early childhood care and development program. Then another factor is the level of access and funding. So the existence and sustainability of this program depends highly on budget and resources allocated by the national local government. Therefore, it is important that they recognize the benefit of ECCD program to children and society so that um, an ample or enough fund can be allocated for the ECCD program. Um, of course, there are other things that can be done, and this is through uh, um, private-public partnership. Again, we have um, another uh, I mean, recommendation later, in partic particularly on the public-private partnership, so that um, access to ECCD can be um, widened. Now, quality teacher and training services is another factor that hinder, because teachers, uh, they do not have enough training and they should be equipped, of course, with proper knowledge and skills in delivering the right pedagogy for the children. And countries involved in the study seek to ensure quality instruction and facilitation in ECCD program by implementing uh, qualifications for teachers. Then the last one is coordination of different government ministries and sector, considering that achieving inclusive ECCD entails holistic and integrated approach, addressing various needs, coordination, cooperation of different government ministries and sectors is then necessary. So this is also aligned with the fact that um, um, in different countries, the ECCT program is handled by different ministries, or at least there are also overlap in terms of um, program offering. All right, um, next slide, please. So given the context and given the, the different factors identified in the study, it would be important to address the root causes of socioeconomic inequality and poverty that create structural barriers to inclusive ECCD. So government should mitigate the, in, mitigate the impacts of such inequalities by targeting disadvantaged families with programs and initiatives that provide opportunity to livelihood income generation and improved quality of life. Also, um, it is important to allot more resources and increase state support um, to the implementation of ECCD program in marginalized community across different levels of the government. So financial resources can be directed towards building ECCD infrastructure, capacity uh, building of teachers, working in marginalized communities, increase state support community-based program by providing more financial and human, res human resources. Now, um, also uh, provide free affordable ECCD program for families that cannot afford to send their children um, to such programs. So whether government funding, when government funding is lean, which is uh, the usual, partnership with other stakeholder can be harnessed. So public-private partnership can be promoted um, to support funding and ensure viability of ECCD program. So one way is by providing vouchers to families. Some, some countries actually started doing so. Uh, they provide vouchers to families who cannot afford the cost of private ECCD. Next slide, please. Again, under accessibility and, accessibility and affordability, Establish strong coordination and collaboration among all sectors and stakeholders for holistic ECCD program, which integrates crucial services. It is imperative um, to have involvement and cooperation of all relevant stakeholders. Also increase accessibility of alternative home-based, community-based and mobile ECCD programs by maximizing the use of mass media. 
ECC, the program can be aired towards, um, by government-owned TV stations and be incorporated in the daily activities of young children, especially those in remote areas. So in areas where there is limited access or no access to internet services, broadcasting through ro radio can be another option. So improve roads and transportation to make ECCD centers accessible, especially to children with disability. Next slide, please. Support ECCD program being implemented by non-government organization by creating legal policies to promote their sustainability. It's instrumental to the success of the community-based management ECCD program, for example, Plan International Indonesia, is the support from the country and local government, as well as the existing national policies and laws. So it's very important that everything coheres so that um, initiatives by NGO can be sustainable. Now, eight, um, implement the activities promoting active engagement of parents. Okay, So it's very important that we engage parents. Parents should be aware of how important the, the ECCD programs are for the development of um, their children. Then reinforce information dissemination by local government and empower officials at the community level. So uh, the government, the role of the government is very important so that um, enabling no, um, or fostering awareness among parents and all the stakeholders no, on the importance of ECCD can be done easily. All right, um, next slide, please. So this one is the, the, um, the other angle. No? So in the, the inclusive uh, education triangle of uh, UNESCO, we have the learning and delivery, learning delivery and learning environment. So while the country policy highlights the need to focus on children for, from marginalized group, not all, however, were able to articulate clearly, specifically, the kind of support to be provided for each uh, for this group. So while there are articulation in other countries, some country it was not really clear on how they will address um, marginalization or how they will address the needs of the different marginalized group. So providing ECCD for marginalized children should also be synonymous with providing safe and social psychological environment for them. So as a recommendation, professional, uh, professionalize ECCD teaching by implementing standards and qualifications such as licensure examination for those teaching at the early childhood level, provide opportunities for career progression based on identified levels, as part of promoting the welfare of teachers, provide with security of tenures and benefits. Increase the number of qualified teachers in marginalized community by providing incentive in, monet and monet in monetary form, sorry, and other benefits. So um, it's, it's very important that we have quality teachers at the level of the early childhood programs. Encourage the formation of professional organizations so to the, to the professional organization, they can have um, exchange of ideas and information, and they can learn from the novice teachers, or rather they can learn from the expert teachers. So there is um, the dynamics no, that would happen uh, with the, so the slide is moving, with the expert and non-expert teaching teachers. So it's very important to have um, um, a professional organization for teachers. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> improve teacher quality by providing trainings on inclusive practices. This could be achieved through pre-service and in-service training on, on sound child development, theories, concept, disability, concept of this on disability, pedagogy of children with special needs. The undergraduate curriculum is proposed to include courses and topic on special education, health, nutrition, as well as teaching students with different ethnic and linguistic background. Next slide, please. So strengthening and institutionalizing systematic child monitoring in ECCD program at the classroom level with a mechanism to observe the well-being of children and their participation in classroom activities 
the various barriers to learning and participation can be identified. So systematic monitoring is really necessary for so that they we the teachers can identify what how they can be they can address the needs of um, the children and then improve that documentation and monitoring of ECCD children in the country. So disaggregate data on children by age in order to have more accurate picture of the status of status of ECCD children. For monitoring and evaluation, the Philippine Education for All 2015 recommended um, as, um, digitalization and better management of information system. The development and enhancement of database system will be helpful in making more informed and evidence-based policy making and program planning. Then develop database available um, early childhood intervention program being implement, implemented by all sectors in the country. This will help in the efficient use of limited resources, uh, preventing duplications of efforts and identifying areas where pro programs you know, are needed most. Next slide, please. Develop more inclusive infrastructure and learning materials. This includes the installation of ramps and improving building opening for easier mobility. Multi-sensory materials should also be made available to cater to the different learning styles of children. The learning environment, learning pedagogy, and learning materials should consider the abilities, language, culture, and context of children. Also, um, provide opportunities for marginalized community to be involved in planning, design, implementation, and monitoring of ECCD programs and services. This will help to ensure uh, program services that are responsive to community needs and context while also encouraging support and participation by parents and the community. With that um, recommendations, um, I would like to um, end by uh, saying that, next slide please. Efforts toward achieving inclusive ECCD require an integrated and multi-sectoral approach. This involves protecting the entitlements and opportunity of children, increasing accessibility and affordability, and improving the learning environment and delivery. Thank you very much. And for those who are interested to access our publication, so you can go to our website. Next slide, please, just to show the... Um, this is um, the full report. This is how it looks like. You can access it, and that's for free. We also have a research brief. You can go to our um, website and access the details, or rather the, the full report, the full study. So you can have uh, the details of uh, the different cases of the eight countries involved in this study. With that, maraming salamat. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. She. And seeing yung pattern of marginalization, I realized how daunting the task of achieving inclusive early childhood care and development truly is. And it requires um, not only the power of one organization because no one entity can really solve this problem. We have we all have to work together, starting from the government, of course, down to the most basic unit of our society, the families, especially the parents, working together to achieve this inclusive ECCD for our young learners. Uh, thank you again, uh, thank you again, Dr. She, and we hope to see you in the Q&A later. Uh, but for now, if you have questions uh, regarding this topic, kindly address them through our chat uh, for our Zoom participants. And uh, for our live viewers, you can comment your questions and we'll go through them later. Well, some of you um, are still typing in your questions. Let me introduce you to our next session. Inquiry-Based Teaching and Learning, or IBTL, is one teaching learning concept that can be applied both in classroom and in alternative setups. IBTL is a pedagogy that encourages students to learn by exploring, investigating, analyzing, and asking questions. It helps in honing a child's critical and creative thinking skills. You might not be aware of it, but you may already be practicing IBTL. Uh, children eight years old and below are very curious 
and it makes them easily distracted from less interesting activities like learning and listening. <laughs> so IBTL may just be one of the key innovations that can increase their learning outcomes. To learn more about IBTL um, and how this can be practiced in and out of the classroom, we now have Ms. Lauren Neris Bautista, specialist from our Educational Innovations Unit. Mam now, the virtual floor is now yours. Good afternoon. One of the seven priority areas under the Simio Joint Education Agenda of Southeast Asian Ministers of Education from 2015 to 2035 is adopting a 21st century curriculum that will be needed to effectively respond to the changing global context and more particularly to the ever increasing complexity of the Southeast Asian economic, social, cultural, and political environment. Simio Inotech embarked on the study Nurturing Critical and Creative Thinkers through Inquiry Based Teaching and Learning, or IBTL, in early childhood education to look at examples of how inquiry-based teaching and learning nurture critical and creative thinking skills of children ages three to eight years in selected Southeast Asian learning institutions. The study posits that exposing children as early as ages three to eight to inquiry-based learning gives them avenues to express and nurture their natural curiosity, makes inquiry a mindset and lifelong learning habit, and lays a solid foundation for critical thinking and other higher order thinking skills or HOTS. The study also posits that IBTL in early childhood education that is not anchored in a specific subject area and provides equal importance to the process and content allows for smooth transition and continuity of learning from preschool to early primary grades to succeeding educational levels. This descriptive study, which was carried out from 2016 to 2019, used various methods such as FGDs, classroom observations, and interviews. The study aimed to document selected Southeast Asian learning institutions' IBTL policies and practices at the early childhood education level, explore the variables that affect the practice of IBTL in ECE, such as curriculum, enabling policies, teaching and learning methodology that includes partnership of parents and teachers, students' learning assessment, learning materials, and learning environment. Propose possible approaches in IBTL that may be contextualized and replicated by other preschool or early grade learning institutions. School heads, teachers, and students, including parents from 16 public and private schools and learning institutions from Brunei Darussalam, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam participated in the study. Now, as we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated the need to support learners, most especially the younger ones. In order to support young learners, Teachers, parents, and other learning partners alike need to exert extra effort to ensure that learning continues, whether it be through remote learning at home or some form of blended learning in school. Whether under normal learning circumstances or in a pandemic setting, inquiry-based teaching and learning is an approach that can facilitate development of 21st century skills in young children. IBTL is a term that encompasses various approaches or strategies that apply the principles of inquiry, such as problem-based learning, project-based learning, and the philosophy for children, or P4C. In this study, Simio Inotech used the IBTL process framework, which adheres to the 5E instructional model by Bybee et al., and combines other related research on IBTL. As you can see here, the framework is divided into three fundamental phases. Phase one, engagement. Phase two, exploration, explanation, and elaboration, which are grouped together in one phase. Phase three, evaluation. 
Well, this phase four, it is added as an opportunity for teachers to enhance the teaching approach for a specific lesson, either in case the lesson needs to be repeated for the same class or for implementation in other future classes. Reflection points for teachers and expected involvement of students in the process are likewise identified in the framework. For example, T1 and T2 refer to teachers' reflection points after the sessions. T1 are questions that should have been asked, while T2 are questions not appropriately responded to by the students. S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5 refer to students' involvement in the process where S1 means the students are expected to participate in learning activities. S2, collect and manipulate data in order to answer questions or conduct hands-on or problem-solving activities. S3, seek clarification of concept, demonstrate their understanding of the concept, process, or skills. S4, apply new understanding to another context. And S5, produce outputs and share or discuss with the class. The 5E instructional model is mostly used in teaching science, but as noted in various classroom observations, the competencies for each phase can be applied in teaching other learning areas, such as language, listening skills, outdoor education, literacy and numeracy, arts and crafts, mathematics, and life skills. In the succeeding slides, we will zoom in on each phase and look at some examples documented from various countries. The examples are simple and easy to follow or replicate, whether during remote learning at home or regular schooling in campus, and can be facilitated by parents or teachers. During the engagement phase, the teacher, the teacher accesses the learner's prior knowledge and experiences. Short activities are conducted to promote curiosity and organize students' thinking toward the learning outcomes of the planned activities. The teacher helps the learners become engaged in a new concept through the use of short activities that promote curiosity and elicit prior knowledge. Here is an example. Like many of you here, I am also a parent who needed to step up as a learning partner to support remote learning under the COVID-19 pandemic. In this slide, you will see a video that we prepared at home for homework in social studies. My son's class was studying various landforms back then, particularly volcanoes. As part of their homework, the teacher gave them guide questions to answer how do volcanoes work and are volcanoes dangerous or helpful? Let's see how a simple activity promote curiosity organize students' thinking toward a desired learning outcome. Hi, my name is Zach. Do you want to know how volcanoes work? When the temperature inside the earth becomes very, very, very hot, magma is formed. Magma is melted rocks. The magma goes up to the surface and the rocks to form the lava flows that make up volcanoes. Volcanic eruptions can destroy things and even lives. But they can also be helpful by adding minerals and nutrients to the ground. Have you seen a real volcanic eruption? I have not! I will show you how to make your own volcanic eruption. First, cover your table so it will not get messy. You can use old newspaper. You need baking soda, liquid soap, and vinegar. Add the Baking soda. Mm. 
can add the liquid soap. Remember, ask your parents for help. Bye! Okay. This simple activity that uses readily available materials at home can be used to introduce a topic, in this case, the characteristic of volcanoes. After the activity, as a learning partner, you can continue to prompt your ward to reflect on any past experiences about volcanic eruptions. They may have watched it in movies, or in the news, or experienced by family members, and continue with the lesson on landforms. Under Phase 2 of the IBTL Process Framework, we cluster the next three E's of the 5 E's instructional model, exploration, explanation, and elaboration. In exploration, Learners undertake activities or experiments that help them use prior knowledge to generate new ideas, explore questions and possibilities, and design or conduct research. Now, this photo was taken in a supervised neighborhood play in Muntanlupa City in the Philippines. The pupils listened to the story of Jepoy the Jeepney. Jeepneys are the most common mode of transportation in that community. The teacher used the story to gain the interest of students in exploring other modes of transportation. The teacher then asked them, what other modes of transportation do you know? Then the students started picking out airplanes, boats, trucks, and cars from this group of toys that were also provided by the teacher. In explanation, Teachers have the opportunity to directly introduce a concept, process, or skill. They also seek students' understanding using probing questions. Learn learners explain or clarify their understanding of the concept. Deeper understanding is achieved through the teacher's explanation. In this photo, in Singapore, grade 1 and grade 2 students attend the Program for Active Learning to facilitate smooth transition from preschool to primary school education. Outdoor education is one form of PAL. In this photo, students simulated a nature scavenger hunt and were asked to find specific animals such as spiders and butterflies. They were also asked to find other subjects or objects such as something pointy, something beautiful, something red and green, encouraging them to come up with different answers. After the scavenger hunt, the teacher asked the pupils to think about what transpired during the activity. The teacher asked if they liked the scavenger hunt and encourages them to explain their answers. The pupils were later asked to write the three things they learned from the activity and share their reflections. Referring to the task of taking photos using a tablet, some photos cited the importance of sharing, taking turns, and working with others. The fourth E of the five E's instructional model is the elaboration of knowledge gained by students. There you go. During this phase, teachers challenge and extend students' understanding and skills. Students apply new understanding to new problems or another context. To reinforce what they have learned from a taste test experiment, these pupils of a school in Malaysia were tasked to cut photos of food from their worksheets and categorize them according to the four basic tastes, which include salty, sour, sweet, bitter. Now, the entire phase two, may it be an exploration, explanation, or elaboration, Student involvement includes collecting and manipulating data in order to answer questions or conduct hands-on or problem-solving activities, seeking clarification of concepts, demonstrating their understanding of the concept, process, or skills, and applying new understanding and concept to another context.
Now, phase three, the last E of the 5E instructional model is evaluation. Teachers assess whether or not students are developing an understanding of the concept. Students produce outputs that they share for classroom discussion. In this photo, kindergarten students of a school in Vietnam learned about the unique work of a magician as the class tackles the theme different occupations. The teacher coached the students to do simple tricks. After giving them time to practice, students were asked to imagine that they are professional magicians and perform their magic tricks in front of the class. Through this activity, students not only develop their imagination and creativity as little magicians, but also become more confident in performing in front of their classmates. At the end of the session, teachers also reflect on questions not appropriately responded to by the students as input to improving the lesson delivery. This phase four or modification of the IBTL process framework, as I've mentioned earlier, was added as an opportunity for teachers to enhance the teaching approach for a specific lesson, either in case the lesson needs to be repeated for the same class or for implementation in other future classes. More examples of IBTL approaches can be found in the research publication. The links to these publications I will share with you in a bit. Now let's move on to the findings of the study. Looking at national policy environment, the governments of Brunei Darussalam, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam all initiated measures in the past decade to align their respective educational systems with 21st century requirements. They recast their educational frameworks and overhauled their basic education curriculum to place stronger emphasis on cultivating their young citizens' critical thinking, creativity, and innovation, problem-solving ab abilities, communication skills, social-cultural awareness, and participation, and other life skills. These initiatives are anchored on laws, education development plans, or blueprint, and curricular framework. There is a clear preference for IBTL as a learning method to promote critical and creative thinking, nurture curiosity, foster engaged and learn active learning, and facilitate deeper understanding of foundational concepts. However, most of the country's national policies and plans fell short of indicating how the teachers will be capacitated or trained to use IBTL to deliver content. Only the Brunei Darussalam Education Ministry provided details on its professional enhancement plans for teachers. Moreover, it is worth noting that except for Singapore and Malaysia, none of the countries have specified in their national plans how student assessments will be done under an inquiry-based learning environment. For the 11 public schools included in the study, state policy is the impetus for integrating inquiry as, peda as a pedagogical approach. The five private schools in the study, on the other hand, had more autonomy in terms of the timetable for introducing IBTL the model used, and the level and content area where IBTL would be practiced. Research results show that there is no one type or model of IBTL practiced in the schools under the study. Some schools follow the 5B instructional model, while a few other schools are committed to the project-based approach. Still, other schools were unable to define the type of IBTL that teachers are pursuing. On further examination, these are schools that have no explicit policy of, on IBTL or have no IBTL-oriented training program for teachers, but nonetheless encourage their teachers to use inquiry as one of their instructional strategies. Most of the schools have incorporated IBTL as early as preschool, although some were unclear on whether it is confined to preschool or applied in other grades as well. At least three public schools are using the inquiry approach to teach science. This practice is evidently a reflection of many Southeast Asian governments' policy to promote the sciences toward the production of more STEM graduates. 
Other schools ventured to use IBTL or elements of inquiry in other learning areas such as math, reading, language, and the arts. Two private schools, meanwhile, have integrated the inquiry model in all learning areas. When it comes to student assessment, none of the schools have instituted a systematic method for assessing the specific outcomes of IBTL. The benefits mentioned by school administrators, teachers, and parents are all casual or informal observations. As for the benefits of IBTL, all the school administrators and representatives interviewed reported observing positive behavioral changes in children exposed to the inquiry approach. Most mentioned that children seemed to have gained more confidence in communicating with others, became more independent thinkers and learners, and were more observant, inquisitive, and adventurous. Some school administrators also mentioned that IBTL made learning fun and enjoyable for children. Most parent informants positively view the inquiry-based approach since they reported observing noticeable changes in their children. Moreover, student informants generally, generally said that they enjoy and learn from IBTL activities in their children. Children who were interviewed for this study mentioned that they had fun and learned new things by doing hands-on activities, listening to stories, using picture cards, and playing games. However, effective implementation of IBTL is oftentimes hampered by the following factors. Lack of space and other learning resources for IBTL activities such as science apparatus and internet connectivity. When it comes to teacher attitude, preparation, experience, there seems to be lack of experience and preparation, lack of adequate knowledge, and training on the IBTL process. Planning sessions or lessons, identifying and organizing interesting activities, preparing visual aids and other learning materials, and crafting appropriate questions are all time-consuming tasks. There is also limited time allocation for each subject, which does not support the long-drawn process of inquiry practice. As regards parental knowledge and attitude, the study revealed that there is lack of technical knowledge and familiarity with the syllabus and necessity of doing research to address the questions posed by their children. The study also offers a set of policy recommendations drawn from interviews with various stakeholders. On teacher preparation, national education authorities need to facilitate the convergence of efforts by ministries of education and teacher education institutions toward the goal of institutionalizing IBTL as a teaching practice. At the pre-service level, the inquiry process should be highlighted as an approach for learning, transitioning to the immersion of student teachers on the application of IBTL theory. Regular in-service training programs such as distance education and school-based programs for teachers and school administrators are likewise suggested to be offered collaboratively by national education authorities. The school had plays an important role as an instructional leader in mentoring and coaching, especially in this type of training. Hence, instructional leadership skills of school heads in areas such as leading curriculum, le curriculum implementation and contextualization, delivering planned learning outcomes, local language materials development, and instructional mentoring or coaching should also be strengthened. Knowledge sharing among teachers and school heads or supervisors by establishing IBTL communities of practice, initiating and sustaining personal and professional learning networks, conducting lesson studies or learning action cells, and holding or participating in learning exchange program can also be introduced to support the professional development of both teachers and school administrators. Education authorities are also encouraged to integrate the ECCE Teacher Competency Framework for Southeast Asia and the Regional Competency Framework for Teachers in Southeast Asia in pre-service and in-service training programs. Professional development for teachers should likewise include development of both tangible skills, 
such as facilitating the development of learners' life and career skills, facilitating learning, preparing and appropriate lesson plans in line with the school vision and mission, creating a conducive learning environment, developing and utilizing teaching and learning resources, developing higher order thinking skills and enhancing integrating ethical and moral values in all learning areas and soft skills, including rekindling and sustaining passion for teaching. As for the learning materials, schools intending to pursue IBTL should identify and invest in the required resources and make these resources available to children to enrich their learning experience through active learning. Teacher-made materials or improvised teaching materials using locally available materials and with the participation of parents and other stakeholders in preparing these materials can also be applied if financial support is limited. It is also recommended that education authorities and teachers closely examine how technology support and impact the inquiry-based learning process. Now, in, when it comes to learning environment, apart from identifying learning spaces where class activities can be held, it is important that It is important to ensure that the learning environment stimulates inquiry and critical thinking and fosters a caring, supportive atmosphere and love for learning. Pictures, maps, posters, and educational toys are just some materials that can be made available for learners inside the classroom or within the learning area to facilitate learning. The learning environment should also be maintained as a safe space for children. Schools should be made aware and should be made aware of and consider the limitations expressed by parents when they develop their IBTL program. It is important to orient parents on IBTL, to familiarize them on the goals and strategies of IBTL, to clarify and manage their expectations, misconceptions, or apprehensions on IBTL, and to help them better understand their roles as learning partners of the school. As regards the assessment of children's progress, further study needs to be undertaken on how practitioners of IBTL in Southeast Asian schools assess children's progress. In general, involving students in, other own, in their own assessment is a principle of IBTL, which is consistent with formative assessment methods, which rely on constant and reciprocal feedback between student and teachers. Moreover, IBTL practitioners employ a range of tools and strategies that allow them to make a more holistic assessment. The student's learning, assessment of the student's learning. These include authentic assessment strategies, non-traditional techniques, use of rubrics to assess student outputs, peer assessment, informal interviews, and classroom observations. Now, since national education policy still plays much importance on standardized tests to, to measure learning outcomes, it is recommended that schools commit, committed to IBTL design and assessment system that balances national requirements with student-centered learning, inclusive educa education, and holistic assessment that is aligned with IBTL. Informants of the study note that the 5D instructional model and other per permutation of IBTL encourage children's curiosity, stimulate thinking, foster imagination, and give children opportunities to explore new ways of learning. There is a consensus that through simple activities, learners develop the habit of investigating and validating the information they come across. For the 5e instructional model and other IBTL instructional approaches to be effective, schools should be able to recognize how these approaches can be contextualized to suit their realities, taking into consideration the differences in culture, available resources, teacher preparation, and national or school level policies on IBTL. Apart from national policies, when it comes to enabling school policies, Schools should also develop their own policies on IBTL that are aligned with the national or regional, provincial, district policies, guidelines, and standards. The critical role of student of the school head in instructional leadership, 
managerial leadership, strategic thinking, and innovation, stakeholder engagement, and including personal excellence should be underscored to support and strengthen the IBTL practice. And finally, when it comes to monitoring and evaluation, Education Authority should develop a monitoring and evaluation framework for IBTL practice, one that can be used across schools, which includes indicators to track students' behavioral change or learning progress, methods and frequency of data collection, and method of analyzing data. Action research at the national or school level may also be undertaken not only to establish tangible impact, but also to identify gaps and weaknesses in improving learning outcomes. In conclusion, developing higher order thinking skills as part of the 21st century learning, learning is one of the education goals in all countries where the study was conducted. All participating countries recognize IBTL as one of the promising approaches that can be used to enhance critical and creative thinking skills among children. Acknowledging the benefits derived from the practice as shared by selected schools, Yet that have embraced the inquiry approach, IBTL is an area that national education authorities are suggested to systematically investigate to scale up the reported and encouraging results among children. It is beneficial to inculcate the inquiry practice among children at an early age to nurture their natural state of inquisitiveness. Ultimately, these fundamental skills will prepare them for future jobs that are needed to propel the society's growth in the wake of the fourth industrial revolution and increasing regional and global integration. More examples of IBTL will be shared later during the breakout session. You may access the various IBTL knowledge products through the Inotech website. The links are given in these slides. And that would be all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Lauren. And also thank you to Zach for participating. I'm already in my late 20s, but I, I, I still feel excited seeing the volcano experiment. So I hope uh, you learned about IBTL from Ms. Lauren, and I hope that you can also apply this to your own context. It still depends on your creativity, how things will go. But I hope what Ms. Lauren gave us uh, uh, emphasized the importance and the effectiveness of IBTL. Okay, so um, thank you again, Ms. Lauren, and we hope to see you later in the Q&A session. If you have questions for Ms. Lauren, kindly um, put them in the chat and the comments section of our uh, live, live, um, live feed on Facebook and YouTube. But right now, let's move on to our next session. Okay, uh, we will focus on the other big player, in ensuring the continuity of early childhood care and development, the parents and caregivers. The pandemic underscored the parents' role as learning partners of the children. With the limited presence of teachers in distance learning, uh, parents stood in as learning facilitators at home. We have here today with us the Deputy Director for Programs of CIMEO Regional Center for Early Childhood Care Education and Parenting, CIMEO CICEP, CICEP, Dr. Vuti If, to discuss the roles of parents and caregivers in ECCB programs. Dr. Vuti, the floor is now yours. Okay, thank you very much for the time to be sharing about the uh, early childhood care education and parenting. So, May I ask the permission to, to show the slide? It's slide show by the committee already, yeah? Okay. Uh, Simeo Chechep is one of the Simeo Regional Center and, uh, in Southeast Asia. Uh, we are located in Bandung, Indonesia. Uh, Simeo Chechep is the Abbreviation from the Southeast Asian Minister of Education Organization, Regional Center for Early Childhood Care, Education and Parenting. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. 
This is uh, the role of parenting uh, skill in early childhood learning and experience and development, experience and development. So uh, we not uh, only focus about the ECCE, but also the parenting, how the parent can be a good uh, facilitator to the children. My name is here. It's already introduced by the, the, uh, the, the host. Next, please. So the the light of our uh, our is started from uh, in the the worm the worm and to the the term. So now we are focused in early uh, early lifelong advance uh, because our area is uh, early childhood care education and we have also about the parenting how about the health safety educated and then can be the skill and em uh, empower productive and resilient in ever we are in the uh, pandemic covid 19 we should be resilient to the Okay. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, we know already based on the, the resources from the Ministry of Education, uh, Culture, and in Indonesia, but uh, the hippocampus is the center for the brain that function to remember, reason, and regulate the emotions. And the volume of hippocampus increased sharply in the children who are receiving uh, love, loving care. So the children that uh, get the loving care from their parents, they are increased very sharply. And also the, on the other hand, uh, the children who not get, uh, not getting the attention of parents, the hippocampus grow is inhibited. This is uh, based on the research and con uh, conducted by the sources from the Ministry of Education of Indonesia. Next. This is the human, human brain development. You see, this one is the, the, the yellow one is the, for the vision and hearing. And then the, the, the Blue one is the for language and then higher cognition function. So when uh, the peak of the brain development observations, hearing and language function of course in the 1000 day of life. So as a parent, we should know this the, the, the step of the development of the children uh, from the fetus to the age of uh, year two. So 1000 day, it started from the, in the pregnancies up to the two years of the children. And then continue to develop until the, before reaching the age of five. This is the big development of the human brands in the, in the humans. Next. This is uh, the parents should also know about the investment. Investment dot, uh, does not have to be in gold. People buy the gold for investing, for investments. But investing in the gold is uh, certainly good, but investing in children is in the egg, uh, the golden egg is not less important. So important also, the, the parents should be invest to their children in the age, uh, in the golden age of the children. Invest at uh, the, the age of uh, zero to five year will make it uh, easier uh, for the children uh, to walk uh, the day into the future with glorious. This is from Dr. Ella, she said like that, uh, Dr. Ella, PhD in 2018. Next. The, ch the, ch uh, the child parent relation has the Mayo influence, of course, be be because we are stay in the one environment on the most aspect of children development. 
So the impact of the, the parent to the development of the children is uh, very important. When the option, uh, parenting skill and behavior have a positive impact to the children's self-esteem, uh, school achievement, and also cognitive development and behavior. So the children uh, will get more positive uh, result from the parents. Next. Uh, nowadays, we, we come to the 21st century skill. It uh, should be uh, skilled by the children and student need also. We have basic uh, literacy. We have uh, competencies should have the student or the citizen in the world should get the competency, also the character uh, quality. In the basic, uh, basic uh, literacy, uh, you, uh, the student should have can read, can write, can count, uh, science library, ICT literacy, finance literacy, and culture and citizenship literacy. This is uh, the basic literacy. But according to the Indonesian Ministry of Education, uh, not allow the early childhood uh, for count, for reading, and for the uh, writing. So they just introduce how to write, how to uh, read, and how to count. And also for the, the students, uh, how the our come complete the challenges should have the critical thinking. This is a 21st century skill. Should also the teacher should do, teacher or parents should in integration this uh, the skill to, to at the home environment also at the the school environments. So the problem, creativity, communication, how to be a good communication and collaboration like uh, BLTB, IBTL, it should be the co collaboration with other students to be uh, good in this, uh, this projects. And also the character, uh, belief in God, fearing to curiosity and initiative, of course, initiative is very important. Uh, persistent to the environment, to the, what we see nowadays, the more dangerous one to, about the uh, virus and ability to adapt, adapted to the protocol of living in uh, pandemic COVID-19 is very important. Uh, leadership to the social and cultural awareness. Next, please. Learning in industrial for 4.0, but in Japan is 5.0 already, starting at the early age, and should be integrated into the, uh, the curriculum or integrated by the teacher at school. Uh, so early childhood want to know, early child. So they much want to know, even it's the hot water, they also hold it, they don't know. So they, they don't uh, know this hot or not, but they really want to know. Uh, child nature is easy to understand. A limited experience of children, effort to increase the plural intelligence, and then limited of the environment uh, monitoring. Nine skill for the children, smart words, logic smart, body smart, when the other people want to carry them, if they don't know uh, is uh, their parent or not, they don't want to follow. Picture smart and also cell smart, people smart, a musical smart and natural smart, a spiritual smart. This is a nine skill of the children should have this one. Next. This is a uh, what level of the education we get the information and then uh, come uh, become the critical thinking and also information we can learn as the education. This is uh, this is uh, whenever whatever we should be get from the information to learn to develop to to their critical thinking. Next. This is I get from the, the what's a world organization, uh, challenges in family, now the married law and marriage 
uh, preparation challenges. Even in Indonesia, the most biggest population in Southeast Asia now is 270 uh, million uh, population in Southeast Asia is the big uh, problems for the early married uh, age for the young people. And they get married after that, they will, what we say, divorce and get a big uh, problem to the social. So important about the awareness of the marriage, or, uh, it's very important for our society and parenting for our, uh, what we say, country. The impact of the global ICT, many people, many children, this uh, just by the, the ICT, they, they don't want to learn just uh, play a game, game online, game online, and value of communication is, uh, is come down. And then the challenge of the structure roles and responsible in the Indonesian family. And this is uh, most challenges uh, for the, uh, in Indonesia. More parents will face the time uh, binds and impact to work economy. And then we go to the more people reminding single also because the youth of the, I yesterday I get from the Ministry of Youth, uh, only 50% of the uh, population, this uh, youth's uh, age in Indonesia. And also the women will get into the, la the labor, this one, and then we come to the family mobility increase from the rural area to the uh, urban area. So many, many challenges in our uh, society. Next. The role of parents in families, parents understand the period digestion and stack or stack of the children development you should uh, know the stack from uh, 1000 days so infancy is 1000 day from birth and then also the children from three to eight year uh, to six year this is the state step one step two and also uh, stage three is from six to uh, 12 this is the, the school year uh, children uh, should get the education from the school and Abdulsalan is from 12 to 17 and also Abdul Hot 17 to up. State of the children, state of the children development are important to be understand and understand by parents or an early childhood teacher should be know about this. So the parent and teacher can be provide stimulation appropriate to the age of year development of the children developments. Next. Understanding, uh, understand the knowledge and child development as the part of the awareness and uh, of the responsibility as the parents. So parents should uh, uh, have the uh, know, have knowledge and understanding about child development. Provide the proper nu uh, nutrition. Uh, we are also Simeo Chechep uh, working with the Simeo Red Phone to be the, the news uh, program about h &E. uh, Provide the vitamin, uh, nutrition to ensure good physical development to uh, the children. Give full love and complete affection to, to ensure girls uh, social emotional development. Prepare the right environment for the children grow and development and ensure appropriate education for the children. Education for all is very important in the world. Uh, 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 the people or the children get education, it will be better living in our society. Next. This is a family age, uh, family age function. Uh, we have religious function uh, should be take care also. Number one, number two, it's not number one. I uh, count from this religious function, social culture function, 
even though we now we working in the global society, global citizenship, so we should know the uh, social culture function, love and affection and protection, uh, protection function, education, socialization function, and then uh, reproduction health and function. This is very important also, reproduction uh, function and also economic function and environment function. This is the family aid uh, function to be uh, known by the parents in our society. Next. The role of parents in positive parenting, establish positive communi uh, communication with children, do not compare children with the other children because very children is unique. So do, do not compare our children to the other children. And then give the trust to the children uh, because uh, basically every children has competence, ability, and this uh, competency will be def uh, will develop when children are, are trusted. Bring the children close to the gods, to the uh, assembly, and build children's sense of empathy for the environment and people. Parents can manage emotion well. So as a parent, we also do the positive parenting, uh, manage emotion well to the children. Next. This positive parent goal, we have the optimized children grow and development. Sino uh, uh, developed one application in Android to about the child developments. Uh, through the positive parenting, children get uh, adequate opportunity to develop their potential and confidence, independence, discipline, grow uh, accordingly with the, his age without any pressure. Uh, free from the intimidation and fear. And then the prevent behavior, uh, deviance behavior, positive parents provide the opportunity for children to develop noble character uh, to improve the quality of children's interaction within parents. So, but nowadays the impact from the ICT, the children's is not, uh, low communication with the parents. Relating the abnormality to grow and development of children. Uh, positive parenting allow the, the person of the sensitivity of the prison to vary every stage. So we have many stage to be uh, more focused more identify and to know how to uh, develop with the children. Next. There are principle of innovation learning approach in early childhood, principle uh, developmentally approach practice, principle of this uh, DAP, explain that teacher and parent delivery learning material must be in according with the uh, development and needs of the children. And then joyful learning for the children. Joyful learning is the, the learning strategy and concept that is a combination of the meaningful context, contextual, constructive, active, and physi physi uh, physiological children will excited and happy in learning activity because students know that the meaning and, and use of the learning. Children learn according to their talent and interest by combination the concept of learning that is being learned with reality and everyday life even with the actual problem that occur in the development in society. Next, please. The role of parent and teacher. So the, the parents should know and teacher, ECCE teacher also should know. 
it's very important to in, encourage the children to be more developed in loving their learning. Uh, therefore, the, the parents should take the real efforts, uh, their support for the children, compassion, protection, and care to the children, enough time for children to learn, provide a positive uh, learning environment, learning to behave for the, ch for the child is learn how uh, to hold and judge. Teach a good moral to the, the children. When we have, we're talking about the moral, even in our house, uh, we should uh, uh, teach the moral respect to the, the order and respect to the uh, brother, sister in the house. Next. This is three pillar, uh, three center in education should be uh, do the collaboration or partnership. One in family, when the children in, in the family, they also uh, have learned from their parents. And then they learn from in school, they also learn from their teacher, their friend in the school and also community. <laughs> The three uh, center in this uh, three center of education uh, should be collaborated in order to increase the quality of education for our uh, young generations. Next. This is uh, the, the alignment. This is the partnership between children and family. Alignment and mutual respect to be respect each other. Uh, spirit of mutual collaboration and togetherness uh, complements each other and uh, strengthen love and care for the uh, one another. This is uh, the, the partnership between children and parents in the family. Next. Why the parents need to be involved in the school? This is uh, parents also need to involve to the school. Uh, in order to give input to the school progress, uh, in order to the, do repetition and uh, positive at home, in order to help school development, the programs, in order to follow the development of the give support to the children learning progress, in order also to understand stage development of the child uh, and child learning readiness. This is the source from Ministry of Education of the Indonesia. Next. The benefits involving parents in the children education is a benefit for the children, increasing the children desire to go to school. Now a day because of pandemic, the, the what we say, uh, Enrollment rate is uh, come below because uh, I don't know about the, the parent thinking, but we should do the advocacy for the part uh, for the parent about the important education for preschool. I heard from the first uh, speaker that uh, in Philippines, at least one year uh, preschool education, but in Indonesia, uh, now also have this regulation, at least one year preschool uh, before they come to the elementary school. Increase the children development and achievement. Uh, and so increase children positive behavior. Uh, it's, it's not, uh, it's very important the uh, children behavior nowadays. So we should be uh, teach the, the children to be a good behavior. Engage uh, the children self trust. This is the benefit for the children. Next. This is a benefit for the parent. Just now we see ben uh, benefit for the, the children, but now it's benefit for the parent. Increase the parent hope in children and also increase the parent desires to uh, continuing study for con continuing studies and also increase parent collaboration with school. This is one. And the benefit for the schools, school get support, 
school climate is more better because of the partnership between the parents, between the children also, increase teacher uh, spirit to work. So the spirit of the teacher increase for working and then progress support, uh, progress support to all school program. Uh, this one is the partnership between the parent, uh, community and uh, family. Next. Parent and teacher interaction pattern uh, in uh, social, social contact, uh, involvement of the teacher and parent for online learning because the big problem now for the uh, in the pandemic COVID-19 era, it's uh, very difficult for the teacher uh, to teach the student learning from home. So they, they should uh, uh, looking for strategy because the ECCE school, ECCE center have no website, have no uh, online. So the teacher, how can they teach uh, to the, the children? The children even not, uh, can not use the equipment, ICT equipment. So the parents should be uh, accompanying the children for the learning this one. And the teacher should looking for the uh, strategy how to be provided uh, delivering learning material to the students. Use the Zoom application technology in uh, this one and seeking understanding on the implementation of the online learning, collaborating between teacher and parents implementation of teaching and learning and for communication, openness teacher and parent in the progress learning assistant. Uh, teacher and parent provide support and motivation to each other. Teacher and parent develop the empathy for each uh, other effort in the assisting children learnings. Next. This is the parent involvement in school. We have number one, number two, meeting with the teacher, attending the parent class, uh, third is become a guest speaker in the uh, the the inspiration class. Uh, love in parent uh, involved in the parent uh, so association, attending the social program at school. Hope to manage uh, help to manage library. Attend the on Father's Day, and then attend to the final uh, school year and also attend the academic report providing. This is uh, parents should be involved in all the programs uh, to know better for our children. Next. Thank you very much. This is our office in Lembang. Here is coal near the volcanic uh, Tangkurban Prahu. If you want to come here to see the volcanic, the real volcanics, is not far from our office. Thank you very much for your attention and wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Director Ruthie, for emphasizing the role of the parents in the development of our young learners. And it's interesting to see the challenges uh, when you showed them, especially the part where in single people are marrying later. It struck a chord somewhere, and I know so many people. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> please don't leave Dr. Vuthi as we invite Dr. She and Mam Lau to join us for the Q&A. Dr. She and Mam Lau, can you please turn on your cameras? Somewhere, and I know so many. Um, Doc she. And we have Doc she, Mam Lau. Are you here with us? There we go. And let's wait for uh, there. There. And so this is our QA panel. I hope you can see all our speakers. Mm -hmm. I have uh, received three questions so far coming from Zoom and one from our Facebook Live. So the first question if, if our um, loving staff can type this uh, chat box. That would be great as well. So the first question, this is not addressed to anyone in particular. 
Uh, the question is, does, does the institutionalization of early childhood care and development consider the idea of institutionalization of early foreign language education in the future where parents will be given an option to have their children acquire or learn foreign languages like Spanish, French, or Mandarin for 10 to 12 years of formal, formal schooling starting at the age of three? So that's the question. Let me know if you need the question repeated. So um, anyone can I answer can, the question? I can start. Um, in terms of institutionalization, um, what we saw in Southeast Asia, uh, the level of early childhood care and development uh, preference is on the use of uh, mother tongue. Okay, so it's not on, only in the Philippines, because as we know, we are uh, we we institutionalize the use of mother tongue uh, from kindergarten or grade one to three, right? So um, with that, um, in terms of the choose uh, the choice for language, uh, it, it's not actually in this institutionalized no English it's not institutionalized I mean a foreign language um, is not institutionalized yet especially for example in the case of the Philippines that we are strengthening mother tongue at the early age and this is actually happening in other Southeast Asian countries there is um, Malaysia for example in the context of Malaysia they start they have English I, I believe three uh, grade three so also in the Philippines, um, at certain point, we start English. But in terms of institutionalization at an early age in the ECCD, I don't think so. I haven't heard, haven't seen any data whatsoever um, in the context of Southeast Asia. My access might be limited, but as far as the study is concerned, there's no such thing as institutionalization of foreign language at an early age. Thank you so much, Dr. She. So to reiterate what Dr. She said, the focus right now, especially on ECCD, is to use the mother tongue and the institutionalization of foreign languages is not yet uh, in view, as I suppose. Thank you, Dr. She. Anyone else would like to address this question? Uh, for Indonesia, this, uh, even the, the, what we say ECCD, ECC is uh, children's, uh, the regulation from the Ministry of Education of Indonesia not allow the teacher teach the, the children how to count, how to write, and how to read is the regulation. But the parents wants uh, their children can be uh, can write, can read, and also can count. This is, is, is uh, the, 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 the big problem also in the society. But I see in Cambodia now many, what we say, international kindergarten. So because they, they, they write international in kindergarten to use the bilingual uh, Khmer language and English to gain more, uh, what we say, students because they are business oriented. So they, they use this one as a strategy to gain more uh, children uh, to come to their uh, international kindergarten. So this strategy, so this is from the international kindergarten, they, they teach in Khmer and in English, bilingual using in teaching and learning. This is uh, I answer to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Vuthi. And um, I'm sorry, but I think my, there is something uh, wrong with my audio. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Vuthi. Would anyone else like to add to that or hop off with what Dr. Vuthi shared with us? Yes, Jen. Yes, if I may. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yes, now. okay, thank you. Because it's raining so hard, I'm not sure if my audio is clear. Um, yeah, regarding the language, um, the question on language, um, my, my thoughts are not exactly, may not be exactly related to um, the question institutionalizing foreign language at an early grade, but um, what I wanted to share or to add to, to the sentiments of our um, esteemed speakers here also, 
is that um, for inquiry-based teaching and learning, what we saw in the studies that um, whether you're teaching mother language or maybe um, a foreign language, say English, for, for non-English speakers, um, the approach using inquiry-based teaching learning is a very um, powerful tool to facilitate the learning. So, so whether it's foreign language or mother tongue, so the approach would be helpful. Thank you, Ma'am Lau. So yes, uh, let's, I hope you remember the concepts that Ma'am uh, Ma Lau shared a while ago on IBGL, and we hope that it could also help you um, facilitate learning of foreign languages. Okay, maybe we can move on to the next question. This is again a general question not addressed to anyone in particular. Um, given the many challenges and initiatives we have taken in recent years, especially during the pandemic, how do you see the status of ECCD uh, or the early childhood care education and parenting in Southeast Asia in the future? So basically it's asking your views on how, um, how the status of ECCD might change in Southeast Asia for the future. May I address? Sorry, um, I'll repeat the question. Given the many challenges and initiatives we have taken in recent years, especially during the pandemic, how do you see the status of early childhood care education and parenting in Southeast Asia in the future? Okay, thank you very much. The ECC, ECC days is not only in, in the Southeast Asia, but the, the concern of the United Nations they have also many, uh, what we say, uh, regulation about ECCE. And in Southeast Asia, we from uh, like uh, uh, the director of Inotec mentioned that uh, the Southeast Asia, this, they have uh, seven similar priority. So number one is the, about the ECCE. So the, the global, and the regional and also the nation more focus on the ECCE now. Mm -hmm. So That's ECCE right. can be open the, the study program in the, the university. I, with the Goishon University, uh, we also just, uh, they apply for the open, uh, what say early childhood study programs in their university and also many other. So don't worry about the, 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 the government will be focused on the ECCE, but the, the most important for the graduate from the ECCE study programs, uh, they should be have a standard to work to get uh, the equal, uh, what we say, uh, salary with the other uh, program study. This one is, uh, we should be focused and the government should be focused on that to be equal in uh, the jobs by the, the ECCE uh, graduation. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Jen? Go ahead, Dr. Shet. Okay. Um, to me, it's uh, promising. Looking at the different um, policies, the different programs in Southeast Asia, we are moving towards a very promising development in uh, early childhood care or ECCD or ECE. Actually, the term varies from one country to another as well. Uh, some country ECCD, some other countries ECE. But at any rate, in terms of the early childhood care and development, I believe it's really promising considering that uh, the different policies, the different laws actually for some country are in place about ECCD programs. And there are different intervention being done um, within the country to the help of NGOs. I mentioned earlier, a very commendable experience in the case of Plant International Indonesia um, is more, uh, is focused on um, the community-based ECCD. And these are actually evident in different countries. However, in terms of strength, in terms of uh, how fast it progresses in, in one country, it actually varies. Um, it varies from one country to another. But then everything, all the mechanism, the laws, um, the programs, um, 
the different interventions and even innovations are there already. It's just that we have to make it uh, forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. She. Um, based on what Dr. Vuthi and Dr. She, um said, I, I believe ECCD is a very bright future ahead of us. And right, looking right. forward, I'm very excited to what will happen in the future years. Hoping that if ever I get my, if I have, ever I have my own children, they would benefit from it as well. That's right. Even in, <laughs> even in Indonesia, the president degree said that one village, one ECE center. So oh. every village should have the this ECCE center. So the, the president uh, degree that by the, uh, by the president uh, Jokowi that said that should have one ECCE center in a village. Well, that's great news for Indonesia and hoping that we would have the same endeavors here in the Philippines. Okay, maybe we can move on to the next question unless you would like to share something, Ms. Lau. Okay, so we can move on. Uh, this one is particularly, I guess, um, well, not particularly for anyone, but this is, I think, a very particular question. Is it humane to have our education system treat our young children as investment goods? Or is it just a command of the education trends in, on this millennium to see our children as business commodities and treat them as investments that would earn returns of investments for businesses? Or is this just the outcome of commercial, commercializing the education? I think this is very controversial and I think it, it's a loaded question, but would anyone like to respond to this? Maybe address the assumptions as well? As far as I can see, the question, actually, yeah, the question actually assumes that the education system uh, treats the young children as investment goods. Maybe you can address this assumption first before we move on to the right, question. Right, right. That's right. Okay, if I may share. Um, well, commercialization. So there are loaded terms, investment goods. Uh, I think I would like to connect this with the um, literature that I highlighted in my presentation. So I think this is this questions are uh, this question is rooted to um, those important studies that I highlighted earlier. So um, let's say, for example, what Heckman um, um, showed in his study that the access to quality early childhood intervention has also been associated with high earnings, labor force productivity, stronger social attachment. Okay, so. The term commercialization and investment good, again, um, might not be, uh, for me, the, the, the right term because it's not compulsory. It's not like mandatory, oh, okay, um, you take, you enroll in early childhood and it's mandatory, there's a paper, there's an agreement that you have to serve the society. But this is more on the holistic development of children. So it's not only about becoming an investment and uh, eventually become part of, uh, you have to pay back eventually. So that's the idea that I get when uh, that commercialization and investment good you know, was um, raised or were raised earlier you know, in the question. So um, with that, if it is mandatory and it is like there, there's, there's a law whatsoever that they have to serve, they have to do this and that as as a return of investment, then maybe there's such a thing indeed as commercialization and investment of good. But then this is the program so far that I've seen in Southeast Asia. It's a lot different because we are more concerned on the holistic development of children so that they could be a better citizen in society and not uh, a payment for whatever the government has provided in the early childhood years. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. She. So we're not intentionally commercializing our children, but the natural consequence of good ECCD program are productive citizens. And that is what the studies have shown so far. 
And uh, yes, this is uh, the, the question was very loaded and we are running out of time. So, uh, but do not, please do not worry. We will send your questions to our panels here. So keep sending them, we'll take note of them and we'll uh, ask our panels to respond to these questions. And I think sir, panels... I just want to say something. Yeah, oh, oh that's right. Uh, sir Bennett raised his hand. Sir Bennett, would you like to share something? Okay, thank you. Uh, th uh, thank you, Genesis. And uh, just a quick uh, uh, to point to underline uh, Dr. Shea's point. No? In the case of the Philippines, uh, it has evolved no? before and has become more democratized over the years, meaning uh, early childhood care and uh, education uh, provision. Note that before... I would say about 20 years ago, it's strictly a private sector-driven uh, education provision. It was not state-provided. Uh, in some cases, uh, limited community, uh, private organization provided that. And then came uh, state-based or government-supported uh, provision of early childhood care kindergarten, uh, the terms as mentioned by Dr. Chad, the terms vary from country to country and even probably from jurisdiction to, to jurisdiction. But what I'm saying is uh, contrary to shall we say commercialization or commodification, uh, it, it hasn't because over the years it has become more democratized with state support and uh, also institution, uh, institutional support from uh, state-run organizations. And I think uh, Buti also underlined this as, uh, uh, as a direction being taken by the government of Indonesia. And note that Indonesia comprises half of Southeast Asia. So whatever Indonesia does is, is bound to be a major uh, intervention for our, in our education. I guess I've said too much and I, uh, not, not enough time here. Let me just finally say congratulations to our presenters and thank you. Thank you, Sir Bennett. If you have further comments regarding the question or if you would like to add additional thoughts, please use our chat box to share your inputs. And so... Our panelists and anyone who would like to share their thoughts, please make use of the chat box. Unfortunately, we are running out of time, but again, we are not going to disregard your questions. We will get back to you if possible. And we would let, uh, we would still um, reach out to our panelists panelists for their input. Thank you so much, Dr. She, Ms. Lau, and Dr. Vuti for uh, the wonderful uh, wonderful <laughs> presentations. And of course, for entertaining us in this Q&A session. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So, so moving on. Okay. Thank you everyone for staying with us up to this point. I know it has been a long day, but I hope that you have experienced a very fruitful learning session with us. So the next part of the program is dedicated to our simultaneous or parallel session. Zoom participants will be assigned to a room, but you may join another room by pressing the breakout rooms button. So uh, initially, our Zoom participants will be assigned to one room, but you will have the um, authority, you will have the ability to choose your breakout rooms. So once you are in the breakout room, once you have accepted the invitation to join a breakout room, you may uh, check the breakout room bottom, uh, breakout room button at the bottom of your Zoom uh, window. For some mobile users, the breakout room um, session or the breakout room option will be seen at the top of their screens. So you can choose your breakout rooms using that function. And um, however, for our, um, for our live viewers, please don't leave just yet. Uh, we have videos for you and we hope that you can also share your thoughts to us as we play the videos later on. So we are now starting to open the breakout rooms. Please wait for the prompt in your Zoom window. And um, any minute now, any moment now, the breakout rooms will be open and you will be assigned to one. Okay, so, all right. Um, you may now enter your 
breakout sessions, your breakout rooms, and please click the join. If you have additional questions, you may also place them in, uh, in the comment section. So another partner for this event is the Council of the Philippines, the Early Childhood Care and Development Council of the Philippines. The ECCD Council is the government arm providing services and programs for children in partnership with other government agencies and private institutions. Let us know more about the ECCD Council through this video. Established as a mandate of Republic Act 10410 or the Early Years Act of 2013, the Early Childhood Care and Development Council supports the government's integrated and sustainable programs for children ages 0 to 4 years. The ECCD Council is working with the member agencies of its governing board, the Department of Education or DEPED, Department of Social Welfare and Development, Department of Health, National Nutrition Council, and the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines and a private individual ECCD partner in order to achieve its ultimate goal of a fully functional national ECCD system guided by their vision. It is the ECCD Council's mission to contribute to nation building by ensuring that all Filipino children aged 0 to 4 are provided with developmentally appropriate experiences to address their holistic needs. The centerpiece of ECCD Council's efforts is the National Child Development Center, a child-friendly facility that serves as the children's first school, serving the communities where they are located. The NCDC offers programs for children and their parents. It also functions as a convergence point for community efforts concerning child development to make education programs truly effective. The ECCD Council has developed a systematized framework and curriculum for early learning and development. Outlined in the curriculum's learning resource packages are the different programs and activities that strengthen and nurture the different domains of development of the child. Implementing these are the ECCD service providers who have gone through the ECCD Council's human resource development programs designed to train service providers with a suitable knowledge, skills, and values that are necessary in early childhood education. The programs also keep them updated on the latest policies, global trends, and innovations in early childhood care and development. The ECCD Council also continues to advocate for early childhood care and development with advocacy and social mobilization activities that generate awareness, interest, and understanding for the importance of nurturing young children through developmentally appropriate experiences. The Early Childhood Care and Development Council is the country's partner for our children's brighter future. It takes a village to raise a child, and when everyone is involved in their care and development, possibilities can become realities, and the child's full potential can be fulfilled. Thank you so much, ECCB Council, for providing this video to us, explaining how the institution helps in providing health, nutrition, education, and social services for our young children. 
Okay, so do we have someone uh, in our viewers who are working in the Child Development Center? So share your thoughts in our comments section and let us know about your experiences. Let us know about the challenges that you experience working for the ECCD sector. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching the video. We have more coming for you, so don't leave just yet. Now that we have learned about the ECCD Council, let us get to know some of their programs for children ages zero to four. First, let's see the Infant and Toddler Early Development Program for, child, uh, for children ages uh, zero to four years old. Let's wait for the video to show. Numerous researches show how important it is for children to be exposed to proper holistic development. Child development starts as early as infancy, and their early experiences have a great effect on their future physical, emotional, and social development. Optimizing the childhood years is the best investment we can make for their future and the future of this country. This is easy enough if you can afford to pay for your child's educational and developmental needs. But what if you can't? This is the problem facing thousands and thousands of families across the Philippines. Fortunately, there is a solution. The Philippine government recognized the need for early childhood care as early as the 70s when Presidential Decree 1567 required every barangay to have a daycare center. In the year 2000, Republic Act 8980 established a national child care development system. And in 2013, Republic Act 10410 placed the responsibility of the care of children from the ages 0 to 4 years old on the Early Childhood Care and Development Council. The Early Childhood Care and Development Council is the primary agency that supports the government's sustainable and integrated early childhood care and development programs such as health, nutrition, early education, and social services. The ECCD Council is supported by the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation in funding the establishment of the National Child Development Centers, or NCDCs, and the conversion of existing daycare centers into child development centers located in areas surrounding NCDCs. As a counterpart responsibility of the LGUs, they will provide a 250 square meter lot, perimeter fence, playground facilities, and a child development teacher to be trained by the ECCD Council. The National Child Development Center is a flagship project that supports the various program of the Council. The NCDC is a national learning center that uh, showcases the best practices of the integrated ECCD services. It is also a laboratory for conducting research and innovations about ECCD. Likewise, it is a resource center for the community to enhance the parenting skills and capabilities. Cities and municipalities that are willing to participate and have the ECCD program as a priority in their community. The National Child Development Center, or the NCDC, is the flagship program of the ECCD Council. The NCDC is a child-friendly facility that serves as the first school of children in the barangay level. And its main goal is to provide and expand access to quality early childhood care and development. The importance of early childhood care and development is its impact on brain development, on economic gains, 
and on school readiness, on health and nutrition, and advocating for child's right at an early age. The East City Council has a three-prong approach in implementing the National Early Childhood Care and Development, which includes access, quality, sustainability, and efficiency. The challenges that we are facing in East City are the following. One is the systematic professionalization of early childhood development personnel. Number two, continuous rollout of policies and guidelines. Number three, investing on ECCD programs on the ground through advocacy and mobilization and the legislation and implementing mechanism for ECCD programs. The future directions of the ECCD councils include the following. One is the continuous cooperation with the duty bearers who are the families, the barangays, the local government officials, the national and international communities. And second, the operationalization of ECCD roadmaps in the national and international levels. <laughs> it's easy to see how important early childhood care and development is for the future of the Filipino children. With your help and support, together, we can make this dream into a reality. The first few years of a child's life are the most crucial for their growth and development. It is the time when the foundations for learning and behaviors are laid and when the growth and development of the brain and body are at their prime. Infants and toddlers' brains are twice as active as adults, so to make the most out of this period, we need to stimulate them with and expose them to developmentally appropriate experiences. The Infant Toddler Early Development Program, or ITED, is designed to nurture and challenge infants and toddlers for their optimum growth and development. Held in a safe and nurturing space, ITED brings together parents and teachers as partners responsible for the development of their children. Teachers provide infants and toddlers with a secure base for exploration, learning, and discovery through developmentally appropriate experiences. While parents, who know their children best and are primarily responsible for their growth and development, reinforce the experiences they have learned. This partnership is guided by the overarching principles of ITED. With family at the core and grounded on strong relationships with family and responsible adults, ITED seeks to create positive emotional experiences in the child's early learning and development and encourages responsiveness to a child's initiative to explore as these foster learning. Individualized and intentional teaching and care not only benefits the child, but also enriches their early learning experiences. 
Before parents and their children can participate in an ITED program, parents have to attend an orientation where they learn the importance of brain development, the principles of the ITED program, and the schedule of classes. Parents must understand why they are part of the program and the role they play in ensuring their child's success. The child's progress is regularly assessed using the ECCD checklist Child's Record 1. Results from the assessment are used in planning the program's succeeding activities, which are shared with the parents during the weekly meetings. Teachers show how the activities should be carried out while also evaluating the parents' response to these and to the ITED program as a whole. Every day, ITED classes are held at the center. The one-hour daily sessions are attended by a maximum of five infants or toddlers and their parents, and each day there are different sets of attendees. Today we have the first batch attending the Monday session. When they arrive, the teacher greets and welcomes them to the class. The class begins and everyone sings a song together. Attendance is checked and parents introduce themselves and their children. The teacher asks what activities were done at home during the past week. Parents talk about their experiences and their child's progress. After hearing everyone's experiences from the past week, the teacher tells them what they're going to do for the day's session. Activities per session will vary depending on the needs of the participants and the themes of the current quarter. Every session's highlight is activity time. The teacher uses this routine to coach parents in doing specifically designed activities with their children. Parents are then asked to try the activity out and the teacher gives feedback so that parents are able to do the activity comfortably at home. Look at the parents and children having fun with each other. Now that activity time is done, the infants and toddlers are given time to rest and be quiet. Calm music is played while the children are resting. Parents and the teacher meet to share their insights and learnings and what else they can do to improve and apply the activity at home. The teacher also gives activities that can be done at home to enrich the experiences gained from the session. At the end of the hour, the parents and the children pack up their things, singing a song as they go along. The teacher says goodbye to the parents and the infants and toddlers. Parents and their children will return next week for the next activity and meeting with the teacher. It might just be a one-hour session per week, but the benefits of the ITED program can be long-lasting, especially during a period where infants and toddlers grow at a rapid rate. Parents become more attentive to their needs and more aware of what they can do to address these needs all of which have an impact on their growth and development. This is the Infant Toddler Early Development Program, brought to you by the Early Childhood Care and Development Council. Thank you so much, ECCD Council of the Philippines. Now let's hop off from the Philippines and jump into Indonesia and see how they do their ECCD programs. Um, this video, uh, this next video is brought to us by our partner, Simeo CISEP, um, showing their ECCD programs for Indonesia. <music> Yeah! <laughs>
Dalam BKBB, penanaman budi pekerti menjadi hal yang sangat penting sekali. Karena dengan berbudi pekerti yang baik, akan bisa menjadikan anak-anak menjadi manusia yang sebaik-baik di kelak budi pekerti. Tapi budi pekerti yang baik itu tidak hanya bisa diajarkan, tapi juga harus dialami oleh anak-anak. Sehingga bisa menjadi budaya di lingkungan sekolah tersebut. Anak-anak yang sedang tumbuh dan berkembang saat ini, membutuhkan pengalaman e, langsung bagaimana harus berinteraksi dengan orang lain dan harus membangun hubungan yang baik dengan orang lain untuk dirinya ini dan juga nanti dan budi pekerti yang baik akan menjadikan modal bagi anak untuk bisa menjadi manusia yang sebaik-baiknya kalau kemudian Dalam prakteknya, BKBB lebih menekankan pada kegiatan kelompok. Karena saya yakin dalam kelompok e, bisa membangun hubungan yang lebih positif, lebih akrab. Anak juga bisa belajar untuk berinteraksi, bekerja sama, juga bernegosiasi. Dan dalam kelompok tidak menutup kemungkinan munculnya konflik pada anak-anak. Tapi itulah justru proses belajar yang harus dilalui oleh anak. Anak akan belajar mencari solusi, mencari alternatif permasalahan yang dihadapi, dan itu adalah keterampilan mereka untuk bisa bertahan hidup di bawah ini. Saya Maheta, boleh aku kakak pawasan berdiri nanti bergiliran dulu ya. Terima kasih kakak pawas.
siapa yang tidak waktu bermain apalagi anak-anak saya yakin uh, mereka memiliki hak untuk bermain dan membutuhkan untuk bermain karena memang bermain adalah dunianya anak-anak satu hal yang penting dalam bermain adalah bahwa ketika anak-anak bermain mereka sebenarnya sedang membangun dirinya sendiri apa kamu jauh? kamu balik ya? mulai ya satu mulai satu mulai Namun tidak hanya fokus pada kondisi keamanan saja yang harus kita perhatikan pada saat anak-anak bermain. Kami sebagai tenaga pendidik juga harus memastikan bahwa anak-anak bermain pada waktu yang tepat. Nah, asumsi saya adalah bahwa ketika anak-anak datang ke sekolah mereka membawa energi yang banyak. Sehingga energi ini harus dikeluarkan di waktu pagi hari. Bukan hanya soal energi sebenarnya, tapi ketika mereka beraktivitas di pagi hari, itu juga membantu perkembangan fisik dan motoriknya. Karena ketika anak bermain, mereka bergerak secara aktif. Dan aktivitas yang dipenuhi oleh anak ketika bermain di pagi hari ini akan membantu mereka untuk lebih berkonsentrasi, duduk, dan bersikap tenang selanjutnya. Perjuangan tidak semudah membalikan telapak tangan, mengubah paradigma bermain sebagai kegiatan yang tidak lepas dari kegiatan anak dalam satu hari di sekolah adalah hal yang tidak mudah. Meyakinkan orang tua dan juru guru juga bukan hal yang mudah. Orang tua seringkali beranggapan bahwa anak-anak ketika datang ke sekolah mereka untuk belajar, bukan untuk bermain. Dan juga tidak sedikit guru yang berorientasi pada kegiatan akademik karena itu memang sangat mudah untuk diukur sehingga ini tantangan terberat saya meyakinkan sekolah dan juga guru untuk mencoba model BKBB ini karena BKBB ini mengubah hampir keseluruhan prosedur belajar yang dilakukan oleh anak-anak dalam satu hari berbicara santun ini ada fotonya ada gambarnya berbicara santun berarti kita tidak apa ya sedang apa ini yang di fotonya yang di fotonya lagi apa ah berarti berbicara yang berbicara santun itu teman-teman kita betul iya ya. ini bukan berbicara santun kalau berbicara santun anggulnya gimana kan angka jika mau Karena menurut saya, mendidik adalah memberi sorry tol dan membaik. Mendidik dengan keturutan hati agar anak-anak tetap berseri. Mendidik untuk menjadi pribadi yang berbudi pekerti. Mendidik saat ini dan nanti untuk kebaikan negeri. Oh,
Right. Thank you so much, uh, ECCD from Indonesia and uh, Simeo Cisep. Welcome back, everyone, to our webinar. So we are now seeing our participants in the plenary. Thank you so much for participating in our breakout groups. And for our Facebook and YouTube uh, live viewers, we hope that you enjoy the videos that we showed to you. And we hope that you learned a lot from them as well. These videos were provided by Simeo Cisep our partners, Simeo CEP, and the ECCD Council of the Philippines. Okay, you can access more related resources through their, uh, through their websites, and we will also be sharing these videos in the on, and other related materials in the online kit that we will provide for our participant, participants. The link to this kit will be emailed to our participants a few days after this webinar, and it will also be available through our website. So keep in touch with us and um, for updates regarding this online kit and hoping that you will access them when they become available. So aren't you curious about what happened in today's breakout sessions? So let's hear the highlights of the parallel sessions from our facilitators. But due to our limited time, we will only give five minutes for each group to share. So again... The question that we will try to answer this, um, for this webinar is, is, how can we ensure an inclusive, joyful, and meaningful learning experience for our young learners? Let's hear first from the facilitator of the group that discussed about an innovation in teaching early grade learners. So for five minutes, please, uh, if you can, please sum up everything that, we have, uh, everything that you have discussed in your breakout session. And the facilitator of the first group raised their hand so we can, uh, so we can, ask. okay, Dr. Romano. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So Hello. we can, yes, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, can you wait a moment uh, so we can, so we can, um, yeah, there we go. Okay, Dr. Uh, Mr. Roman, please. Yes, good afternoon everyone. Okay, through the utilization of the digital app and mathematics using IBDL, we can ensure an inclusive, joyful, and meaningful learning experiences for our young learners. Why? Because the digital app and mathematics we initiate and created and mostly we are using it for almost three years in the public schools, specifically in Medellin Castell Elementary School and now in Pinyahan elementary school it is DAP appropriate how because it is age appropriate it is intended for five years old which is our kindergarten students and it also it is also language appropriate we are in the, the, the digital app in mathematics we use the mother tongue or the dominant uh, dominant mod, uh, language or dialect used by the students here in Quezon City which is Tagalog and then at the same time it is jive or suited to the interest of the students so this digital app in mathematics is a play-based app wherein students are giving opportunity to answer the activities in the digital app uh, wherein uh, they can, they can, uh, they can get immediate feedback whether they answer the activities correctly or not wherein they enjoy the activity while 
playing at the same time this, this app is offline which means we can uh, we can access the app our kids can enrich their uh, mathematics skills or competencies uh, at the comfort of their home it doesn't require internet connection and then at the same time this digital app mathematics help to ease the burden of parents and teachers during the pandemic why because most of our students most of the parents of our students here in Quezon City are working parents means they have less time to supervise or assist their uh, kids at home so this digital app and mathematics address one of the issues we uh, encounter during the pandemic and at the same time this this digital app and mathematics help them uh, to uh, to have the activities at home anytime and anywhere at the same time with the use of IBTL approach. This is a very good approach wherein we include this during the 5E activities which we have for the IBT, IBT, IBTL, we have engagement activities, we have also exploration, explanation, elaboration, and during the evaluation stage, we include also re real objects to facilitate realistic experience among our students and also hands-on experiences that they can feel that they are really involved in the in, uh, involved in the, re and the learning process. And at the same time, using IBTL, learning becomes more joyful it it also ensure inclusive and provide meaningful learning experiences among our kids thank you thank you so much for miss roman and now we have miss jenny mercado from the mundinlupa ecd yes hi hello Bob. So how can we ensure that there's an inclusive and joyful <clears throat> and meaningful ex uh, learning experience for our young learners? So here in Muntinlupa, as I have mentioned earlier in our breakout room, uh, we make sure that there is an inclusive and joyful and meaningful learning experience. If we can provide variety of activities that answers or that that ensures that this is uh, in the interest of every children, <clears throat> making sure also that uh, the activities and everything that we have given the children are based on what they really need. It's developmentally appropriate. Uh, we ensure that there's always play in every activity because they are more uh, cooperative and they are more joyful during play. Uh, we also make sure that those uh, teachers uh, handling them are in good condition most uh, in all times. The, to make sure that they uh, they are uh, them or the teachers that handles them really uh, can give the best that they can give to these children. Because as we all know, the uh, teachers are the most important entity inside the classroom. They are the ones thinking of different strategies, uh, different programs and activities for the children. So let, let us be more, uh, we should be investing on, uh, on the different things or the different materials that we should be providing for the children, making sure that they are safe uh, and that they are, uh, these materials or these activities are the ones that really uh, will best uh, fit for the interests of every children. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Jenny. Now we have Dr. Ear, um, one moment. Dr. Ear Dui Hastuti from IPB University. Dr. Ear? Oh, there, there my name there. is, uh, yeah, I'm tu Ibu Tuti. Uh, I think uh, it is uh, for, I, I, I speak from uh, the perspective of parents. Yeah, I think uh, parents have some challenge during the pandemic and uh, for the next era. Uh, but uh, however, uh, it is uh, important for parents to collaborate with uh, teacher in serving the uh, early child education for young learners. Yeah, uh, because the situation for today is uh, the children also uh, have to be uh, 
adjust it with the technology, yeah, the young children, the young learner. But at the same time, they also having a, a limitation, yeah, due to the economic of the parents or the family. Uh, and also the limited access to the internet and technology in the remote area of uh, our uh, uh, people in, in, in Indonesia because we have 13,000 uh, islands in Indonesia and some of them are or uh, are placed in the remote and uh, marginalized area. So I think it is important for the uh, learning process yeah, for the next uh, period is to uh, strengthen yeah, the roles of parents, the role of parents and, and how they could collaborate and also communicate with teachers uh, in when they are facing problems regarding the learning process and also the technology use and media use uh, with the teachers. Uh, communicated uh, openly uh, with the teacher will help assist parents to also solve uh, the emotional and problems behavior uh, uh, occur during the uh, pandemic and also during uh, and also when we are facing the next uh, era uh, in as, as maybe you already know indonesia has a uh, uh, many uh, villages and also many islands uh, so that's why our teacher has to be also uh, adapting to the uh, standard and the, to the economic uh, situation of the parents uh, who are also having uh, uh, some difficulties regarding these uh, uh, pandemic situations yeah uh, and uh, 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 the role of government, I think, is uh, have to be uh, have to be strengthened also. Uh, maybe not only the Ministry of National Education, but also the uh, the, uh, the local government to also um, giving uh, facilities for the uh, children and young learner to uh, to the. Uh, school yeah to, to school to access to the internet and also the other technology maybe computer or uh, other media for learning yeah uh, some of uh, our local government also give uh, sub subsidy to the school who are in the uh, limited uh, uh, what we call this limited uh, access and facilities and they give uh, 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 also donation and also encourage donation with the community uh, from outside the uh, local area. I think uh, 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 the key for the uh, how we could ensure continuity of learning in ECED is uh, being a collaborate, being a collaborate with. Uh, teacher with parents and also with the community and also the with the local government so that's that's i think uh, the uh, roles of uh, all the uh, uh, what they call this uh, the uh, structural yeah the structural the formal and non formal uh, also uh, organization to uh, to also uh, help uh, assist the young learner who are on the limited uh, access to the technology. I think that's my uh, suggestion, uh, Mr. Genesis. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Dr. Hastuti. And uh, thank you so much to our facilitators for giving us a quick overview of what transpired in the sessions, in the breakout sessions. But we would also like to ask our participants and of course our live viewers to answer the questions that you have um, discussed. How can we ensure an inclusive, joyful, mean and meaningful learning experience for our young learners? So we hope that you can share your ideas, your thoughts, your answers, or maybe your comments in the chat and in the comments section of the, your respective live, uh, live broadcast. So whether that's YouTube or Facebook, I hope that you can share your thoughts with us. Okay, now to cap off our webinar, 
Yeah. Indeed, this is such a, this is a day of many learnings and um, very fruitful discussions. And now may we call on Dr. Teresita Inchong, Vice Chairperson and Executive Director of the ECCB Council Philippines uh, to share her synthesis of the whole event. Dr. Inchong, the virtual floor is now yours. Thank you, Genesis. In addition to your, um, okay. Yes, Dr. Inchong, we can hear you clearly. Okay. So, good afternoon, and I would like to congratulate the CCEP and the INTEC for uh, initiating this webinar. This is very timely because we are um, trying to improve the quality of education. And we are aware that the ECCD is a transition, the foundation of all learnings. So may I start by saying, by quoting actually, which will answer one of the questions. That the best way to reduce deficit is to invest in quality early childhood development for disadvantaged children. It creates better education, health, social, and economic outcomes, and increase revenue and reduce the need for costly social spending. What we are saying here, the children are not the investment. The investment are the resources that are inputted by the government so that we will have the quality, accessible and sustainable program for our children. In the Philippines, we have the Public Act 1040. As a matter of policy, it recognizes the age from zero to eight as the first crucial stage of educational development and strengthening the early childhood care and development system and appropriating funds, therefore, for other purposes. In its declaration of policy, it is hereby declared that the policy of the state is to promote the rights of children to survival, development, and special protection with full recognition of the nature of childhood as well as the need to provide developmentally appropriate experiences to address their needs and to support parents in their roles as primary caregivers and as first children first teachers. Our 1987 uh, Constitution, it is very clear that the state shall protect and promote the right of all citizens to quality education at all levels and shall take appropriate steps to make such access, education accessible to all. So in our webinar, ensuring continuity of learning in ECCD amidst varying context and pandemic, this is our takeaway. The importance of ECCD. Early childhood development is one of the central components of global and national development as it is a part of the sustainable development goals. Specifically, in uh, goal number 4.2, it states that ensure that all girls and boys have access to quality early childhood development and pre-primary education so that they're ready for primary education. And number 4.A, build and upgrade education facilities that are child disability and gender sensitive and provide safe, non-violent, inclusive and effective learning environments for all. Being able to understand inclusive ECCD in a wider perspective, will help address a more equitable response to quality ECCD. Promoting strong engagement, children, as another. The activities both at home and school will help strengthen their development in different domains by, that, by better understanding concepts and context. Through exploration, collaboration and coordination, which permeates in all the speakers that we have. Similarly, family and parents' involvement, even the community, will have increased the children's interest in learning and development, positive behavior, openness, and confidence. And finally, let me quote the Villa Mistral, a Nobel Prize winner in, in education. And he says, 
We are guilty of many things and many faults, but our worst crime is abandoning the children, neglecting the fountain of life. Many things we need can wait. Your car can wait. The children, the child cannot. Right now is the time his bones are being formed, his blood is being made, and his senses are being developed. To him, we cannot answer tomorrow. His name is today, which is why today we have the series of this webinar, which I hope most of our, um, our viewers will have a takeaway. So thank you very much and have a blessed night. Thank you so much, Dr. In Shong, for synthesizing the whole program. And indeed, the people is not the investment to the state, but rather it is the state investing in its people. And the best way, I suppose, to do that is to really provide a good program and a better future to our young learners by establishing and strengthening our inclusive ECCDs. Thank you so much again, Dr. In Shong, for that synthesis. Now, to formally close our session, we would like to call Dr. Ellis Ross Diawati, Acting Director of Simeo CSEP, to give the closing message. All right. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Can everybody hear my voice quite clearly? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good, uh, very good afternoon to all of us. The Honorable Director of SCE Primary and Secondary Education, uh, Minister of Education, Culture, Research, and Technology of Republic of Indonesia, Dr. Muhammad Hasbi, Director of Simio Inotech Philippines, Dr. Ramwan C. Bakhani, and also uh, the Board of Director of Simio Inotech and Simio CISAP, distinguished speaker from Simio Inotech and Simio CISAP. Distinguished uh, organizing committee from uh, both sides, and then also from uh, ECCD Council and uh, from IPB University, and all the webinar participants. Greetings from Indonesia. It is uh, my great, great uh, pleasure to address you in the closing remark ceremony of the webinar held as an intercenter collaboration between Simio CISAP Indonesia and Simio Inotech Philippines. I believe that uh, all of you have sent uh, your valuable time to join this webinar. It is indeed an effort to provide a strong base for lifelong learning as an essential building block of a good future for our children. And I also believe that we have been uh, spoiled but by a lot of precious information on ECCD provided by our inspiring research person in this webinar. So ladies and gentlemen, early childhood uh, has been seen as a very fundamental stage in the future of a nation. Therefore, the quality of development of ECCD should be well uh, prepared for uh, to form a better nation uh, in the future. In this very occasion, it is my honor to, uh, I mean, uh, on behalf of the Director of Senior Regional Center for Early Childhood Care Education and Parenting, to express my deep appreciation to the Director of Senior Inotech for a very enjoyable collaboration with us. And then my special thanks also goes to distinguished speaker, Dr. Savulin Almonte Acosta, and Senior Specialist Education Research uh, from Simio Inatech, and also Ms. Lauren Neriste Bautista, Specialist Education Innovation Unit from Simio Inatech, and also our uh, our uh, beloved deputy director for program, uh, Mr. It Puti, and also uh, Dr. Dwi Hastuti, MSc, the same as an expert from IBEBA University, and uh, Dr. Joanna B. Romano, the Southeast Asian Education Innovation Award winner, and also the ECCE, ECCD counselor. 
And also, I would like to acknowledge all of the ECC teacher of the Philippines, of the uh, I mean, of the participants uh, who has actively participated in this webinar. So, ladies and gentlemen, I highly expect that everyone could benefit much from this webinar and also able to implement the insight and knowledge that you gain from uh, for the sake of the improvement of the quality of uh, early childhood education, especially in Philippines and in Indonesia. I think that what I can say uh, here, and I uh, declare now that the webinar on ensuring con continuity of the learning in ECCD at this very context and the pandemic is obviously closed. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Dr. Ros Diawati. And thank you so much, of course, Simeo Sisep. We look forward to more partnerships with you in the future, and we are excited to see the future that is promised, or the promising future that ECCD offers to us all, especially to, the, to our young learners. Okay, this concludes our webinar for today, for this afternoon, for this rainy afternoon here in the Philippines. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, for joining us in this online event. If you wish to receive a certificate, please answer our end of program evaluation form through the link that we will show posted. We have been pasting it in the chat, bo chat box for the Zoom participants. And if, any, uh, if you would like to uh, no, uh, use your QR, we have also uh, displayed the QR codes here. Uh, on our Zoom, so there. Certificates along with the link to the online participants kit will be sent within two weeks to those who have submitted an evaluation form. So you are required to answer the evaluation form if you wish to receive the online kit and the certificate. Please note that we will be closing the evaluation form today um, May 17 at 11 p.m. Manila time. So that's 10 p.m. for our Indonesian friends. The webinar presentations will be made available on our website at www.cmeo-inotech.org within a week's time. So this webinar will also be available on our Facebook page and YouTube channel a few minutes after this live broadcast ends. Please follow our social media accounts at Simeo Inotech on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for further updates. So while you answer our end of program evaluation, here are some announcements from Simeo Inotech. So please pardon me as I will only read these. Um, we have first, of course, the Southeast Asia Teachers Comp Competency Framework Course 1. Uh, this is an online professional development course for in-service teachers worth 60 training hours spread over the course of two months. This program was designed and developed to address the challenges and context of the pandemic. The program is anchored on the Southeast Asia Teachers Competency Framework, which is a set of essential competencies that teachers in the region must develop. And these are know and understand what I teach, help my students learn, engage my community, become a better teacher every day. And at the heart of the framework is the joyful learner. Second, we have for the school heads, the managerial leadership for school, for school heads, course one, managing teacher performance in challenging times. So managerial leadership course one um, is an online course based on the competency framework for Southeast Asian school heads. It is the first course under the managerial leadership program and it aims to help school heads manage, support and develop teachers and uh, through a balance between a systematic performance management process and a more emphatic and human-centered approach. Okay, the pilot implementation of these programs are finished and uh, they are now being processed by NAEP for accreditation and will be publicly offered. So uh, watch out for these programs and hopefully you can, uh, we can catch you there in our courses. So before we end this program, <laughs> And before we cut our broadcast, may we ask our Zoom participants to turn on their camera for a picture, a group, quick group photo. So I, we still have 199 participants with us. So this will take some time. We hope that you can turn on your cameras and show your pretty faces. So we will know uh, the investors and the foundations of our ECCD program in the coming years. We are now in gallery view. I hope 
hoping that you can see yourselves. Okay, are we ready to take the photo, Puga? Uh, okay, we're ready. Let's wait for 10 more seconds for those who are still coming in, turning on their cameras, because the, the view will move. Okay, okay, <laughs> now hold your smiles. Uh, this will take long, <laughs> so please hold your smiles. And three, two, one, smile. Okay, next page. Let's wait. Please hold your smile. If you have seen yourself uh, and you're done, you can um, you can rest your smiling face now. One more page. Okay. And yes, I think the rest are uh, no, photos na lang and names. So that's it for our picture taking. Thank you so much for um, gracing us with your smiles and with your very amiable uh, looks. <laughs> thank you everyone for this. And we would like to thank all our participants here in Zoom as well as our viewers on Facebook and YouTube. Um, we hope that you learned a lot of valuable lessons and recording stopped. Uh, inclusive early childhood care and development through this half day webinar. Let us all work together for an inclusive, joyful, and meaningful early childhood learning experience for our young learners. This has been your host, Genesis from Simeo Inotech. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next webinar. Voices ring.